What is up, everybody? My name is Hudson. Welcome back to Inscription. Coffee's hot, water's full. Let's go. Let's jump in. Welcome back to episode four. Um, some things that we're going to have to remember today and take note of is that overflow damage. We figured that out last time. Excess damage goes to the enemies behind it, which is such a huge play considering the things in the back uh, end up getting a free strike on your units before they're able to retaliate back. So killing things in the back, especially things like wolf cubs, huge plays. So we're gonna have to remember that. Um, also, we unlocked something new. We got the stuff out of this. We got a ring on our finger. I remember that. We got a card here that was the other wolf guy. Um, we learned that if we're able to, you're still curious. First step would be getting those cards in your deck. Um, we need to get the squirrel and a pronghorn so that we can match this and get whatever behind this painting. Um, I don't usually go for the pronghorns. The things that just keep moving because I think it's a little bit chaotic and, and I'm already a little bit confused as to like how many steps there are into remembering, you know, the whole card game thing. But we should do it even if it means a loss just so we can get behind this, right? We need to solve the puzzles outside the game despite how many times we need to play the game. Um, I don't know if there's anything special for completing the game. And um, I'm assuming that, you know, regardless of being in the game or not, we need to solve the puzzle in the room. It seems like the game really lies here um in in this room and not really on the board which is kind of an odd thing um and maybe it does maybe if we beat the game it's all all for nothing also this knife the, the knife that we cut out our eyeball with um chat was saying the earlier you use that the better because he'll give you a free new eye and potentially we might see something you know going through the game if we have that ancestral eye if he allows us to take that ancestral eye again uh, i would assume that uh, he would he she they would and um yeah, so we'll see what happens. Stinky Skunk 3-0. I like the idea of Stinky. I think it's pretty powerful. Elk. Um, if we're going to go... Ooh, the Black Goat is also really nice because if you go Black Goat, then you can start going things like Grizzly and like some really powerful stuff. Maybe we go for Antler Creatures, though, and then we go for the Wood Carving Lady and we try to really buff up our Antler Creatures. All right. What do we got? Your pack was full. I should have just stabbed my eye out already. But a small critter approach. Show the pack rat. I'm in. I like the idea of pack rat. We could also sacrifice the pack rat to put this on somebody else, right? Always an option. What do we got coming up? Can't really see it. Let's just go. Get into our first fight here. I don't really want to use the knife immediately because... So you found the stunted wolf. I have seen this play out enough times to know that a plan is in motion. Make haste. I don't use my knife right away because um, four, four weight is, is huge. It could get me out of a sticky situation, but he's got the pronghorn. You SOB. Pronghorn has got a bifurcated strike, meaning that it can't attack directly in front of it, but it keeps moving. So you don't want to be stupid about this i want to just i don't know do we want to wait or do we want to soak up a little bit of damage on our bullfrog and then let our bullfrog have a free shot but then the pronghorn's going to move back left and then the bullfrog will probably die unless we're able to get in there but tanking the damage immediately and getting a free shot quote unquote free maybe would be the play here he'll take one damage and then the pronghorn will move over pronghorn won't do any damage but it'll hit me once pronghorn will hit it We'll see if we can do anything by that turn anyways. Let's go. Alright. Um, we don't have a squirrel, so I guess we have to pull a squirrel at this point in time. And you know what? The bullfrog's not doing a whole lot, I guess, at this point in time. So, like, who's to say we wouldn't just sacrifice the bullfrog for a pack rat instead to get two damage off? And we get a free item, I guess. So if we're going to get a free item, then maybe, maybe we want to stab our eye out. Maybe we do. If I remember correctly, it's when this is played, you receive a random item as long as you have less than three. Uh, if you have more than three, he gave us pack rat. I'm assuming there's not some sub special thing for the sigil. Maybe we, I mean, popping the squirrel, we probably should just grab this and then know we were going to pop the squirrel. Should we just stab our eye out? <sighs> maybe. 
maybe. I don't know if there's any advantage, you guys. I really don't know if there's an advantage for having the ancestral eye early. Chat made it seem like there was, but then again, you know, one comment out of 50 comments is... I can't just say, like, that's, that's gold in here. Let's do it. Maybe I should have waited for, uh... The first boss fight, just I like he stares at it and then he just keeps going like, eh, seen worse. Big whoop, kid. Um, here's what we could do: we just play the squirrel, and we can play the pack rat over here, and we'll just get that, and we'll win. And we can play the stink bug too to get a little bit of extra damage. Masterful. <laughs> Thank you. We need that money for the the furs, the boots of the fur. Care? Would you care for a new eye? Yeah, it's immediate that he gives it to us. And, uh, there's some weird ones in here. Who's to say that, like, one of these weird ones don't do something, right? That looks like, I don't know, was that, a, like, a gecko eye or something like that? Um, but I, I still feel like maybe going with the ancestral eye would be the right move here. And find salvation in Cuckoo Clock. Happy with that one? It's just, you know, make sure we're not crazy here. And, uh... Take a look at stuff. Again. Sealed. Anything? Arg, the agony. Yeah, he's not gonna do anything new, I don't think. This is just a sanity check at this point in time. Make sure I'm not stupid. Alright. New card. Give me that pronghorn. Turkey vulture, eight bones, three three flight. Whoa. That is wow. That's a that's a big wow. Um, I like the wolf cub a lot. I like the cat. I'm gonna go with the cat here. I think early cat's gonna be a strong play. If we could actually buff the damage on the cat, then we could keep the cat out to do damage, right? And still sacrifice it and not have it be a wasted spot. Or, 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 um, we could take this infinite sacrifice thing and put it on something else. Right? Please, no. I don't understand what he's turning into. He's turning into a robot, and I don't get it. And then this thing's got the mask. Right? It's no longer a stink bug. It's like a... I don't know. If you must. Be a really cheap 3-2 wolf. Um... 2-2 two, two double bone stink bug would be a good play. All of them would be a good play. Maybe the cat could stay out. But giving it a little bit of defense. I might just take that. Like I said, I might just take that and apply it to something else. If I'm being honest. Maybe we want to buff our elk and we'll just go really hard on antlered creatures. Maybe. Sounds fair to me. Three, four elk. Why not warm your creatures by the fire? Push your luck or pull away. Wait, what? You can keep going? The power of an elk was enhanced by the warmth. As one of the survivors being pulling that you withdrew. Okay, okay. They're stepping that up a little bit. You can keep going to try to get another power on there. I wonder what the odds are in favor of upgrading that card even more. So so maybe that, that could be a like a really strong push. Let's say that you had a card that you were like kind of iffy about and you're like, well, like, if I could add like seven attack to it, then I would keep it. Otherwise, I would want to get rid of it. It's a win-win situation at that point in time. All right. Um, we want to go to the carver lady. I don't know what this... Oh, that, that's the... You get to choose the cost of the card. This is going to be a tough fight here. This, you get to uh, pick the uh, the class of the cards, so like antlered creatures, canines, rodents. Um, I like this, but I also like this. This is kind of necessary for the idea that we had going. Random card maybe would be the way to do it. We could actually just take a step back and just see what the cost of this pronghorn is. It's a two cost card, so we could go for the cost card. And um, I don't know if that narrows it down any more than just getting a random card. Because at least if it's a random card and we don't get the pronghorn, we could still pick something that might still be an antlered creature like another elk. Ah, there's so much going on. So much going on with this. You really got to think. And, and people are saying that I, I'm i making things intentionally more difficult than they need to be. It's like the film roll, is that correct? My plan here, the moment of truth, but you must defeat him first. 
It's gotta be something where I, I get the film roll, I, I, I put it in, and then I shoot it, and maybe it's like, kills him. I don't know. That's my guess. What did we get, by the way? Frozen possum. Frozen opossum. How do we, how do we use that? Frozen opossum bottle to the user. Frozen opossum is created in your hand. A frozen opossum is defined at zero power, five health, frozen away. Um, can we, can we look at what frozen away means? We can, we can access the book here and we have to just, I didn't mean to push that button. Frozen away. When a card bearing the sigil perishes, the creature inside is released. So it's kind of just like a wall until it releases another wall, which is zero attack, five health. Um, that's, that's pretty good. You know, if we're going to end up playing something anyways, let's say, you know, we could immediately get this pack rat out. If I were to go ahead and pop that squirrel. But here's the problem with the pack rat is the pack rat's going to immediately get destroyed. No, it's not because... Oh, that's flight blocking. I thought that was flight. Mighty Leap is a flight block. So I was going to say if he had flight, he would actually attack over my pack wolf and then my pack wolf would be able to take care of him. Um... We could, if I did the stunted growth or stunted wolf here, the porcupine will do one damage to it. And then the next turn, it'll attack it. And then it'll die because of the amount of health that it has. The stoat, once again, won't be able to really contend with it, but the stoat can contend with the coyote. So let's do that. Yep. And... Like I said, I like the idea of getting that pack rat out. We get a free squirrel, grab another squirrel next turn, and we get that pack rat out for another item and just see what it is, because I think the items could really tilt the scales in our favor. Clever. Super clever. Stop that! So here's the problem here, is that he's going to go ahead and kill the coyote and uh, not going to do any extra damage to get that next coyote, which would be choice. So, in fact, what we could do here is we grab a squirrel, and then we put the squirrel down, right? Then we end up sacrificing the stoat for the pack rat. Like that. And we ended up getting another... Oh, I didn't use the free squirrel yet. Yeah, dope. This was a genius play. I mean, I'm happy I did that, besides the fact that it would have been better then because of the, the stunted wolf was the same. <laughs> We're doing fine, you guys. We're doing fine. This is going to be okay. I could get the stunted wolf out right now, and he could actually contend with that guy. Yeah, that's a shame. One one turn too late. I see my mistake here. Oh, you're making it more difficult than it needs to be. I'm actually doing, like, really well, though. Apart from all that stuff. I'm not... I'm not sweating it, so to say. Didn't get anything extra there. It was kind of a shame. I hit it perfectly. It's like, oh, man. Um, I did say I'm going to go random here, just in case there's a different antlered beast. But watch them not give it to me. I feel like they're not gonna... Like, it, it's aware. Hey, That's what I'm talking about. Gotta hope for a first turn pronghorn pull then. Um, let's go back. Let's just make sure... I wanna just make sure it doesn't change. I'm pretty sure that it doesn't change throughout the entire game. But just to make sure. We got time now to make this happen. The less cards that we get, the better. Alright, give me the antler thing. Didn't get the antler. We want... Carbury the Sigil was automatically played. Or do we want um, antlered creatures that can fly? Antlered creatures that can fly could be super dope. I think chat was like, Huts, you're really not giving flight enough credit here. Free plays are also just sexy. And I like it. Let's try flying antlered creatures. Flying squirrels right now, which is actually a thing. Their only option, right? Might as well. Now our squirrels with zero attack can fly over. And not attack. Me again. There's my pronghorn. Now's the time. It, it, even if we have to sacrifice. Even if we have to sacrifice. Um... I no longer have the free squirrel, so I guess actually we're just going to have to wait until the next turn. Which is was a shame, but I did say, remember, if it, if it causes a loss, I still want to do it. I'm hoping, 
I'm hoping, 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 hoping that it's my side that I have to match and not the entire board. Because how do I clear out every single thing on his side just to get the squirrel and prong arm? Like, when would that happen? How would that happen? Now would have been a great time to have the, um, the stab my eyeball out. Well, gosh darn it. Yeah, even if it causes a loss, we could just start again. We could do immediate little, like, get back in there. No, we can't. I have to sacrifice both my squirrels to get my pronghorn out. I'm like, next turn, I'll be able to put the squirrel out and the pronghorn. No, I won't. In fact, pronghorn moves. Pronghorn moves. Pronghorn moves. I can use that to my advantage. How much damage does it do? Only one. It's going to take one damage. Next turn, it'll attack the grand fur. It'll be over here. I'll be able to pull another squirrel. Yeah, we can do this. We can do this. Draw a card. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. So the squirrels here don't matter. I have to sacrifice both of them for the pronghorn. And then I'm going to put the pronghorn here. How much damage is coming in? Three damage is coming in. Okay, I think I still lost. If I'd use the hook on the back coyote, does he just move up one? Or am I going to hook him all the way to my end? Yeah, I think it's over no matter what. It wasn't... Okay, so it wasn't possible to get it done. It's so hard to think like three turns ahead. No, it's not, Hots. It's all the numbers are right there. Spider, get out of here. Like, okay. I'm sorry. Shit, dude. I, I, I don't know what to say. It's, I have to pop my frozen possum. It's a block. But then that totally just completely screws over the whole squirrel thing. The amount of pressure that I'm under when I'm playing this game is almost unbearable. Is actually almost unbearable. Think about when you guys are playing this game, if you're even playing this game, that you had like 10,000 people looking over your shoulder at any given time. What I maybe could have done was like put down my elk or something like that, and then I could have let the elk do the damage, like here, right? And it would have done three damage over, and then the three damage would have came back. And then I could have sacrificed the elk to get the pronghorn out. But this is still, I don't think it would have. I don't think any way that I spin this, I think we were screwed to begin with. It was not possible this turn. This round, even. So close, though. So close. Skipping your first turn is unacceptable. And I think you honestly have to have a couple of squirrels on hand. Back up. And that blows. I don't, I don't see a way around it, so. Did the game just crash? Was that supposed to happen? Hello? Am I dying? Frozen Possum, okay, Frozen Possum is going to block that shot. I can't sacrifice the Frozen Possum. I can't, I can't sacrifice them. I was going to say, maybe that's still possible, but I don't think it is, actually. I don't believe that it is possible. Another Coyote, and, and what's the um, Alpha? Still, still two until we die, which is going to come in right here. And I've got no way to deal that back. So, wee wee oo, wee oo, wee oo, wee oo. Oh, wee oo, wee oo, wee oo, wee oo. We stowed it up. 
Got a stoat. Pronghorn's dead. This turn. It's going to attack that Grand Fur. Move to the left, but maybe not. The Porcupine will actually deal the damage to my face. Then a turn after that, the Pronghorn will attack the Porcupine and die. So sacrificing the Pronghorn right now wouldn't be sensible. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> By pronghorn, we'll get one damage off. I bet the pronghorn doesn't go first and kill the coyote and the porcupine, and then this guy, it's one damage, I guess, either way. Doesn't really matter. And what else is going to happen? My possum is going to be out. Grab the squirrel, I guess. I mean, I want to get, like, the bone thing. I could play that immediately. If I grab a squirrel, I can't play this squirrel immediately. I could play the elk immediately. Um, which, you know, maybe that's the play here, actually. Because Stilt will kill the coyote. The pronghorn, we could sacrifice the pronghorn, put the elk to kill the porcupine. Right? This pronghorn's gonna die either way. Elk won't die. I could get him out and actually do something with my life. With its life. Awesome. We'll take care of that coyote. And we'll pull a bone card. Great draw. And I don't know if it matters what I do now. Actually, the pack rat would have been a pretty perfect pull because we would just sacrifice as many things as we need. Possum, stoat, put the pack rat in, get a free item. We might, we might get that next turn. Might get that next turn. Uh, how much damage are we going to do? One, two, three, four, five, six. And that'll be the game. So, really what we should do here is just put the stunted wolf out there so we get one extra. Use me wisely. We do seven damage. Yep. What do we got? Oh, the trap had... The trap had business been lagging. After being defeated by the challenger, well, I'm thinking of clearing my inventory, trying something else. Pelts are cheaper now. Pelts are cheaper now. Good, because I, I want that one. And I think that's all I'll do. Stay for more golden ones. Much appreciated. All right. Uh, we want to put the cat sigil on something, maybe. We can get two more items, or we could try to buff one of our dudes. The infinite cat sacrifice. Not on the pelts. We've learned our lesson on that one. Infinite cat sacrifice, maybe on like the stoat or something like that. I feel like the stoat's always pulled and. It's kind of in the way. Could be on the stink bug too. The stink bug is commonly pulled, and two bones are not hard to come by. And uh, on that situation, it's it's like free blood because this one doesn't cost blood to play. This one does cost blood to play, so it's like blood for blood. Maybe blood for bone, bone for blood, is the the better play on that one. I mean, otherwise we could do maybe um, bifurcated strike on the elk, which could be pretty dope to make this pretty much into a really really strong pronghorn. We could put Pack Rat, um, the card bearing the sigils played. You imagine putting the Pack Rat on a Cockroach. You play the Cockroach, the Cockroach dies, comes back into your hand. You play the Cockroach, this is like you get item after item after item after item. Like, that could be really strong. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Bifurcated Elk, I, I'm like almost like convinced that Bifurcated Elk is the way to go, but I think the cat's just kind of, it's a wasted card. Costs the blood to play and then you have to hope that nothing hits it. I like the idea of the cat stink bug. One at a time. Cat in the bottom, stink bug on the top. Hello? Yes, more power. It's so cheap to play, two bones. Yes. 
And we get one bone just by sacrificing the first squirrel. Yeah, Prospector. It's too bad there's no um, extra bosses. No words, no talk. So, you know, he's going to talk. The trees closed and tied around you, creating an impenetrable bush. The only way out was forward. Then the hobbled shape of a man stood in the way. Yeehaw, partner. Got of gold. I'm going to crack it open. Take a look. Those flying squirrels, though. So we did. We immediately pulled the this guy, Mr. Salutations. Um, pronghorn squirrel, first turn, but can't really do anything about it, can I? Pack mule and coyote. We don't have to kill the pack mule immediately, but it's not a bad play. We need to get maybe the greater smoke out there to contest that coyote. Because then it'll die soon after that and give me those bones so I can get my stink bug out there. We might actually end up getting the bones prior to that. Can't get the pack rat of the pronghorn because that was a, kind of a bad pull there. Um, can we sacrifice the greater smoke? It doesn't have the no sacrifice thing in the bottom left. So I say we probably could just to get the stink bug out. But the stink bug can't contest the coyote. Like that seems fine, I guess. And just go with that. It'd be really nice if it could do more damage and get rid of that uh, wolf cub. And we could do that actually by putting the pack rat down now in its place. Right? Stop it. Draw your card. Mad, bro. Um, yeah, that seems like that would be doable, right? Assuming I can sacrifice it, right? I can sacrifice it, and I think I will. I think that would be the best play to get rid of that wolf immediately and get an item, which is the hoggy bank to the user. You will immediately gain four bones. Got it. So, like, if you try to click out here and click on one of these things when you try to get rid of the book, <laughs> you're done. You are actually done. Give up. Stop trying. Go home. I'm going to put you here. It's a safe spot for you to be doing some real meaningful damage on things and stuff without dying. And then we're going to get the pronghorn out there. I can sacrifice you and you. Do that. Watch me do. Of course, now we might do too much damage. It's always the risk here, right? You do too much damage and then you uh, activate the next turn. And I, I don't have very many cards and we need to get those cards in the pack mule, but the pack mule is going to lose three health, one damage coming in. How close are you to dying? Two from dying. So that was pretty good. Moles coming up. He moves to wherever the, he's needed. If it's a gun attack in empty space, the mole will guard it, but I don't think he can do that just yet from the back. Something that we could do right now is we could end up sacrificing any number of things off and then hold on to our cards. Let's say that the next turn, since we're not gonna kill him just yet, that might be the smart play. Oh, he, did, he hit the right side, he hit the right side. That's my bad. The pronghorn has the bifurcated. Not the, the elk does not have the bifurcated. Gold, I struck gold. My infinite sacrifice thing is now gone, which is of course a horrible, horrible place to be. Gain bones. We could hook. What if we hooked the pack mule? <laughs> what would happen? I think we're a little bit in trouble here. Yeah. Come on, get. We need two spots open in order for me to get the elk out. Which is a shame. Big shame. I don't want to pull something so that I can try to block them or pull a squirrel. I don't know. Is there anything else coming besides the bloodhound? I don't know. Stunted wolf could get in there and not completely kill him. 
at least get a, a turn of a block off. Maybe. Alas, I'm dead. The death adder's coming up, right? Gotta remember about them death adders, right? Right. And then we are going to do the math in our head to try to figure out how we're going to kill the death adder and the dog in three damage away from losing this whole entire thing. Pull a squirrel, obviously. Put a squirrel down. Put a squirrel down. We're gonna go ahead and kill both of them. And get this elk. Elk's gonna have to try to kill that adder first, otherwise the elks will start here and it'll attack the bloodhound. Move to the right where the adder will get a free strike at the elk's throat, se uh, severing its jugular and killing it outright. I put it here. I'm gonna kill the adder first, then move over, take two damage. Next turn, kill the bloodhound, then move over. The pack mule will probably be all the way on the left. It'll miss it completely. This is the only way to do it, though. Bloodhound's like, I wanna move! Damn it! Damn it, Earl! Wolf cub are coming. Dang damn wolf cubs. What we gonna pull? Some with bones. Lost time, eh? That's not what I wanted. I got like 75,000 bones over here. And four, four on the way. This is good shape though. Um, and then we're gonna, yeah, I guess do the squirrel, get the stoat, and then we can kill the pack meal at least. Put a bunch of stuff here. The coward, my meal was defenseless. Big boy wolf time. We have a warren. I've never seen this before in my life. Rabbit hole. When a card bearing the sigil is played, a rabbit is created in your hand. A rabbit is defined as zero power, zero health. When a card bearing this sigil is played, a rabbit is created in your hand. What's the catch? Right? What's the catch here? Zero, it's zero two. It's just like a just a bunch of block, I guess. Beaver. Our bearing the sigils play the damage creator on each empty space adjacent. We're blocking, so block, block, McBlock, Blockersons. Six bones for a rattler. I'm gonna go ahead and, and use that rattler to contend that wolf will work quite nicely. I want to like to play cardboard. He said. Bro, it's just a game. Why didn't you calm down? Why are you yelling at me? Why are you yelling? Okay? Bro. Ended up getting them anyways. I didn't want to. Just didn't take the time to do the math. I thought we were fine. Reignite. She's a new card. Didn't we get the Gek at one point in time? Another pack wrap. The, uh, the mushroom means that we already have one of them in our deck. The douse. Remember, we were very, very underwhelmed with the douse. Sparing the sigils, play a chimes created on each empty space. The, the When the chime breaks, it, like, what would it, it made it more powerful or something like that? No, it, it, it broke the chime, it attacked wherever the chime was broken, I think. So it was basically like a trifurcated, poor man's trifurcated strike. Mantis God was just godly last time because we put the trifurcated strike on somebody else. I and mean, we could do that on our flying elk. Wiping the dust from your trousers, you return to your journey. So we're going to want to find the woodcarver lady so that we can get the antler thing so that we can make our, our antlered creatures fly. Tepid water flooded, flooded your boots. Flies swarmed around you. You had entered the wetlands. Um, Carver Lady. It's a shame because I would also like to go to this item shop thing and try to get some squirrels on hand. Because if we were able to pull one or two squirrels, we'd be able to do the squirrel pronghorn thing. Like I said, I think that's probably one of the only ways we're going to be able to make that happen. Um, there is only one set of 
cards here on his side. So potentially they do actually want us to get the squirrel and the pronghorn with zero things up top. I think that we're just going to have to grind away and lose like 75 battles before we're able to magically find that window where we can do that. Unless you've already seen an opportunity that I could have done that and I'm dumb and I just didn't see it. Isn't this the trapper, the, the, the lady that buys my pelts? I thought it was. So going right here might be the best of the best of the best play, sir. We got card pull. The great white, tyrannical great white, the master of the deep. Three bloods, is, I think is gonna be too expensive for us. Get a second bullfrog and make a, another bullfrog. I don't like any of these options. I'm not a huge fan of any of them. What I could do is try to get this sigil on something else. The same though by taking the river otter and at least it'd be usable. Um, I don't like any of this. It's too bad we don't have the ability to refresh. All right, give me my antlers, lady. Snakes, canines, or gets better in one turn. Give me canines right now. Stunted wolf, we could make it our, so our stunted wolf gains flight, I guess. Not my favorite. Do we have any serpents? I wonder if the bullfrog uh, is considered part of that group. Cold-blooded. Something like that. I don't know. Because what else would the bullfrog belong to? Oh. They put me in a tight spot here, lady. I might go for one better. Like, at least flying wolves could be cool, but I don't want my... I want my wolves to be able to attack the enemy. Hate it. Could potentially put the... Oh, just, just give me it. I'm done. Here. Could potentially put our squirrels out there to, to deal some damage, I guess. There's a card X thing out there, which is going to be interesting. We got our pack rat immediately. We do have a slot for an item. We have a golden pelt. There's a bullfrog coming up on the stump nipples. And that's about it. So, the alpha is going to make it so the bullfrog and the stump are going to be able to attack me. And that adder is not looking like something I really want to go up against. Right now, at least. What I could do here is pull a squirrel. And I think that'd be the best play here. Pull a squirrel, sacrifice it, get the pack rat out. Elder squirrel. Play that here. We ended up getting this skip his turn item. Yep. Uh, and we have two bones. We could actually save the stink bug to fight against the adder next turn. And that would be a, a decent play because then he'd be in a free slot, assuming he doesn't play anything else there. We will sacrifice the, the dude infinitely. We have Rattler coming up. 3-1 Rattler. No sigils on it. <sighs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Prong Daddy. What are we going to do with the Prong Dad? Prong Dad from Baghdad. A 1-1 one, one strike. We could sacrifice the Pack Rat. Not really. We can't really do that. I was gonna sacrifice the pat rat to get the pronghorn out, but not not really. I'd have to sacrifice my stink bug too. 
you could put the pack rat or the the pronghorn here and you'd do one damage one damage it'd be a safe place to hit that adder from but it's not really you know we kind of want that pack rat to kill through if it was the elk it would have been nice because it could have double killed the elf the alpha and the rattler which would be the perfect way to deal with three damage coming in do we want a golden pelt well we're gonna take one damage here from the stump nipples um the Bullfrog is going to get a shot off as well. Maybe doing that. Oh, another adder coming in. He's gotta be shitting me. <sighs> Mantis Jesus. Yeah. Now yeah, we can deal with that. He can deal with that. He can put him right behind the stump and he'll be able to kill the Rattler and the Adder. Not in the same turn, but... Sorry, stinky bug. You're gonna die from the Adder, not from the sacrifice. Good way to deal with that Rattler. Could get my Pronghorn out if I really, really, really wanted to, but... I think I'm okay right now. And to deal with that bullfrog at some point, huh? On the right. So the oh, the stink bug's not gonna die. He has stinky. This is great. He like can't die, unless he's of course being attacked by something that has like three or higher power. Um, and I could use him for stuff. Put the pronghorn down right there. What happens? bifurcated strike. It's going to do one damage to the bullfrog, one damage to the stump, and take one from the other dude. I'll get another turn next time, and I'll be able to finish off the bullfrog, which could be... No, he won't, because of the golden pelt will uh, die, right? He'll attack, and then he'll move, I think. I think he's going to get blocked to the first one here. Are you following everything that I'm saying? You guys are my rambling. You feel like I ramble? I'm really trying to explain everything that my brain is going through, and it, sometimes it might just come off as rambling, it's, because you're not in my head, right? you will be able to win this turn, right right here. Um, in that case, we want to just try to pull something that does a lot of damage. We're going to do three, three damage, four damage, right? Because one, two, three, and then four from that, if we can't pump up those rookie numbers with this thing. My elk. Good sacrifice. Mantis God's only gonna do two. We sacrifice the Mantis God and we get him in there and that's gonna pump it up to a three. And we'll get a little bit extra money from that. Double check, yep. Sell my pelts. Are your pelts clean? Air pelt. Raven skink. Elk fawn grizzly. Another prong daddy. Um, I like the idea of getting the elk fawn out and having it turn into a pronghorn. Isn't that what it does? The cheaper pronghorn might lead us to being able to do the... Because we put squirrel out there, sacrifice it. Elk fawn out there. It doesn't die. It moves over to the far right slot. Next turn, we pull a squirrel. We put it on the left. I think it might rely on the fact that the enemy is not doing anything. We could do the skip turn thing. Maybe? Ooh! Incredible golden pelt. We have a long... Elk. Excuse me? Mole Man, Ouroboros, and Amalgam. Amalgam's great as well. It counts as everything. Long Elk. Four bones. When a card bearing the sigil damages another creature, that creature perishes. And it moves. I like the idea. And we had that item that gives us more bones. Hmm. <laughs> Carbarian the Sigil Paris is a copy of his crate in your hand. Unkillable Uraburos.
it could also be great, right? When I sacrifice the Ouroboros, does that count as it perishing? We could just continually sacrifice the Ouroboros turn after turn and get those numbers up, right? Because the Ouroboros is supposed to gain power every time it's killed. I think I, I have to go long elk here just for the build that we have currently. Try it out. It's new. This looks like it's going to get rid of a card. Oh, we have done this before. You give it something, and, and depending on what you give it, it's going to be, like, happy. Not. Like, River Otter here, probably. Maybe the Bullfrog. I'm not really using the Bullfrog for anything. River Otter. This is that thing that lit up last time, remember? What's that card that you gave me? Let's go check the, the wall. Let's go see if that did anything with this. Like I sacrificed something to you. Are you happy? Can you give me something? What if we were supposed to sacrifice an antlered creature to this thing with antlers? It just seems like they want me to defeat him once more. That just seems like that's the main thing to do here. It doesn't even seem like they care about this. Do we have a duplicate card of anything? Oh, is that a, a bonus? Like every single time that we start now, we have one free bone. Makes me feel better about the Longhorn play. Ringworm and Worker Ant. Okay, 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 okay. All right. I don't understand the Ringworm and its purpose. I'm being honest. Get out the Mantis God and put it right here. Seemed like maybe the best player right now. I'm pretty sure we lost this battle last time. Because of how overpowered the worker ants are. Is this thing's going to be a 3-3 three, three next turn? Or 3-2, rather. Could have just kept the ringworm there to block the bullfrog. It'd sacrifice it. Get out our pack rat. We want to use one of these items. We want to get out the elk. But the elk here could kill that worker ant and the bee behind it next turn. Kill that worker ant. That might be the play. Getting the elk out. Killing the mantis god right now doesn't seem like it's the best idea, but at least we won't kill that ringworm, which is doing literally nothing. coming in. It's going to end up killing my elk next turn. And we're going to take two damage here. Which is going to kill me. Um, it's, it's over. At that point in time. So I'll use my hook to grab that worker ant, I guess. I don't see I don't see much choice here. Can make him skip his turn as well. Maybe the skip turn thing. The hook seems really powerful. So save that for the boss battle, I guess. Because we get to keep one of theirs. I'm I'm thinking about grabbing one of those great white sharks that comes after us. Using the hook on the angler really piss him off because if I skip his turn right I'll pass my next turn then we can go ahead and pull another squirrel get the pack right out there to kill the worker ant there I'm obligated to pass our elk is still gonna die unfortunately We 
We got a frozen possum. Again. All right. Oh, it moved. It moved, right. Elk was gonna move. I don't know why I thought the work ring was gonna hit him. Ringworm's going down, though. Isn't the best, but the worker ant will no longer be able to kill me because it's down to one. Two, two here. So the pack rat might die. Well, what should we pull? It doesn't really matter, I don't think, at this point in time. Elk fawn. We're taking one damage now. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. We can pass. Got that bullfrog via the elk, though. Okay. Not in good shape. Still. Still might have to use some items. To get the elk fawn out there, I just don't know what that does for me. I think I might have just killed the elk fawn. I think it's it might move over into the ant's path. I was thinking that they would use their turn up, then my elk fawn would move over. But no, I think I actually just screwed the elk fawn. Because it attacks and then moves. Yeah, fucked it. Totally fucked it. This game, say what you will, it is anything but simple. It is anything but simple. You have to think like it's like chess. You need to you need to be at least three turns ahead. Otherwise get out just stop just stop playing it don't play it anymore you can't handle it we meet again probably one of the worst pulls i could have pulled mr stunted dickhole i was really thinking that maybe there would be a way too to get that pronghorn to grow into an elk and then it could just like move back and forth and kill those ants and maybe get a squirrel out there to yeah whatever it doesn't matter anymore bones please once again just like there's so many bone cards that we have uh he's giving up no why would i why would i take that instead of trying to go for more money <laughs> so many bone cards, I'm telling you. Just an unbelievable amount of bone cards. They're just, they're everywhere. Get a bone card here. Oh my goodness gracious. Great balls of holy fire. <sighs> we sacrifice... Five D chest time. Five D chest time. We need three to win. We need to get the stunted wolf out of here. I'm, I'm thinking if I was able to somehow get the pronghorn on the right and a squirrel on the left now, we could kill off that worker and somehow this would be the only time possibly to ever get this cleared and have the pronghorn with the squirrel on the left. But I don't see a way to necessarily do that. If we were to kill the stunted wolf, replace it with a bullfrog here, right? Then the worker ant will deal one damage, kill the possum next turn. Worker ant will have one health left, and then the bullfrog will deal one damage. It will be two damage away from killing him entirely. The turn after that we sacrifice the bullfrog and we put the stoat far left who then contends the worker ant killing it and nothing happens so we're still two from winning 
Then, the turn after that, we pull. Oh, the pronghorn with the bifurcated strike is going to end this whole thing. I was gonna say we, we pulled the pronghorn right. We'd have to okay, redo, restart. Ah, ah! Gosh, this is so frustrating. Ah! Anyways, what are we gonna do here? We're going to put the bullfrog in. It's gonna do one damage. We're down to two left before we win. Next turn, possum dies. Ant is fine. We then kill the bullfrog, put the stoat there. Stoat kills the worker ant. There's nothing else going on. It's just a stoat and nothing, right? We then next turn pull a squirrel and... <laughs> put the, but do nothing. We do nothing and we let the stoat Attack one, right? We're down to one left. We have one squirrel on our hand. The next turn after that, we sacrifice the stoat and one of our squirrels to get the pronghorn far right. And then we place the other squirrel where the stoat is and we unlock the painting. <sighs> The problem with that is, you guys, every time I try to visual this or visualize it this far ahead, I miss one simple step. Like somebody has flight, somebody has some bullshit mechanic that I just didn't pay attention to because I'm thinking about a hundred things. I think that'll work. Check my math. Pause the video right now. Ah, oh, ah, uh, ah. And now I gotta execute this exactly how I just said that I was going to. <sighs> Sacrifice the stunted wolf the bullfrog was the first step then sacrifice the bullfrog for the stoat I'm not sure we're going to be able to pull two squirrels in that time frame I don't know if I calculated that correctly betrayal damn right Squirrel. Sacrifice the bullfrog for the stoat. Back on the board. Squirrel. <sighs> wow. 5D flipping chess. Watch the penny changed. Got him. Just barely gonna tickle him to death, but it's fine. We might actually, we have another turn to, to pull something. I wanna go back, I wanna check. I wanna check the bull, I wanna check the wall. And we have the ancestral eye too, so if there's something behind there. Oh, you, oh, you actually had to, you had to finish it when the pronghorn was there. I would, I will flip this table. I'm ready, I'm getting ready. I'm psyching myself out for the pain to not be open so that I can go ahead and flip this goddamn table over. What do you got? Stink bug, good. Play him, I don't even have to get rid of the elder squirrel. Perfect. Give me the money. Remember when he's like, hey, accept my surrender. <laughs> Never will I ever do that. Oh, I just got it. I was like, is a different painting. This is nice. Where would you put? Where would you put a plant? Ask this guy. Arg, you really did it. I knew I had seen stuff come out of that painting. Bring it here. Oh no, he's gonna kill my plant. I like the succulents. Eh. 
That's nice. Oop, keep up. It looks so nice. Plant, give me the weapons! Boop, boop. Should I give it to him? I can't give it to him. Can I put it on the table? Can't use that. Damn it. Hmm, you plucked that from the oil painting. You must not like the cards that I deal you. Fine. Wait, what? What what happened to it? What what? Well, where to go? I don't see it anywhere. What's that hook hanging from? The plant was actually a lockpick. Squirrels just t posing. Oh gosh, what happened to it? I I feel like I maybe I maybe blew something there. Maybe I was supposed to leave it on the side and let it grow bigger. It's actually a key plant. Um, I'll double check or uh, see if we have any duplicates or something. I don't think that we do. Okay, 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 okay. So going to the mushroom would be silly unless we get a duplicate right now. Oh. It's a refresh! Right? Once per game? Once per card round? The invulnerable beehive. When it's attacked, you will withdraw a bee. The stalwart snapper. Can I look at my, my hand? Um, we could... We could, we could, we could, we could possibly put unkillable on uh, uh, the pack rat, right? We could do like a pack rat. He, he just gives me items after items after items. It's a little too expensive to play though. We could put unkillable on our long elk. We could put trifurcated strike on our long elk. If it damages anything else, they all die. Trifurcated Elk would also just be dominant. I mean, it's going to do three damage. It has a little bit more life in it. Long Elk might be easier to play with for bones. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Bop. Ba da ba ba da ba. Mwip. Um, unkillable elk could be pretty dope too. Unkillable on the stink bug probably won't let me do it because he's already got a thing. I don't know. The beehive. What was it again? Once guard bearing the sigil is struck, a bee is created in your hand. We could we could turn the like the elk into a bee or something. That'd be hilarious, wouldn't it? If we had a river snapper and we turned that into a bee generator, it'd be pretty dope. I think unkillable is it's just gotta be the way to do it, right? Maybe. We could refresh. If we're not gonna use the unkillable immediately, we're gonna go trifurcated strike on the long elk. Then maybe the answer would be to just refresh and see if we can't get something else. I don't see something like extremely overpowered to put the unkillable on. I'm excited we got that painting. I was pissed in the beginning when we bunged it up. Unkillable stink bug, like I said, would be really, really strong, but... Bloodhound. Moves to where it's needed. Six bone rattler. I like it. So what's this one again? Opposing creature is placed opposite. Then it moves to jump in front of it. Go well, maybe Rattler here. Not, I'm not crazy about any of that. I probably should just come with the cockroach. Okay. What were we saying we wanted to do? We went up a trifurcated strike on the long elk. 
Yeah, see, the, the dude that already had the ability on it, the stink bug, it's not even shown here, so they don't let, let you do it twice. Which means our long elk, we won't be able to, um... put something else on the long elk. We might be able to get to a campfire to increase its health. Which would be nice. It seems, it just seems, like, really good, right? I think. Coming up a campfire here, but we kind of want to go for the deer thing. I like that. Every single battle, we get one free bone. Happy. <laughs> Me again. Got the long elk to start off with. Coyote, raven egg, which turns into a raven and a kingfisher coming up. We won't be able to do much about that kingfisher. Spider, you can stay. Um, just gonna start racking up squirrels, I guess. Maybe it would make sense to put the stunted wolf in front of the raven egg. Start off with. And get the stoat out there. Six to one, half dozen the other, I think. We still have the gets better on squirrel thing. Um, yeah. Let's try that. Start racking up bones. Kingfisher is just going to be free damage for them. If we put something next to the Kingfisher, then it'll be able to, um, kind of put damage back on the board. It has flight, so we can't attack it unless we have flight. No, even flight block doesn't attack. It's still just only blocks, right? All right, so we could get the stoat out if we really wanted to, and the stoat could kill the coyote. And then we have a sparrow coming in with flight. We don't have flight block right now. <laughs> Keep me alive. We don't have four bones just yet. That was good. That was good. We got damage trading right now. That's 1-1. One, one. River Otter's coming up. We'll be able to hit the River Otter, but the River Otter will get a free shot first, I think, on me. But we'll get three damage back on the board. Long Elk, we could just go ahead. I was going to say sacrifice a squirrel, but we can't exactly sacrifice a squirrel. We could put the squirrel out there for now, though, so that it <sighs> grows into something that doesn't something, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to kill it off before it actually gets an attack off. But then again, we can't sacrifice a squirrel to get a bone. It doesn't allow you to do that unless you have a blood card to play. Oh, wait a second. The long elk looks a little bit different than I remember. It must have just been that long piece of its antler that we saw before. You look all weird, dude. Stop it, draw a card. Knock it off. Do we even want a squirrel then? Maybe get something and then sacrifice one of these guys and then we can get our long elk out trifurcated strike on a one damage thing maybe we should have done something on, on a higher damage just so we can put more damage downfield uh, potentially between enemy waves instead of trying to focus on killing enemies considering the next person up is going to have all these burrow things that we can't hit anyways so maybe maybe that was a, a mistake uh, if I pull a blood card we could sacrifice one of these guys like I said and, and then get the long elk out That would be a helpful thing. Stinky bug again. Yeah, we kind of blew that one. But we could put the stink bug down to get extra blood in the future, I suppose. I think we're doing okay right now. We'll we'll live. Probably, oh, we probably should have put the stink bug in front of the kingfisher so that the kingfisher... Because we can kill the sparrow. We can't kill the kingfisher. Still doing just fine, though. So we have infinite sacrifice. Do we get a bone every time we, we sacrifice the stink bug? Uh, no, we don't. Okay, that's not something that I ever even thought I needed to pay attention to last time, so I didn't. Once again, we're winning. And 
And let me just try to pull some blood stuff. That's that's worth it. It's worth it to go like this and this. Oh come on! So do I wanna to go to the campfire to beef up my long elk? Or try to get all antlered creatures. I think I think we gotta go for the all antlered creatures thing. And every single time we get a chance to re-roll. Buddy. Antlered creatures, please. Another elk. Solidifies my decision to go over here. All RNG though, we don't know if we're gonna get it or not. So, did we want flying antlered creatures or, or the fact that the antlers get uh, stronger? Super strong long elk sounds like it's the way to go. Flight, once again, we attack over them so we won't clear the enemy forces. We'll instead just attack over them and then they'll be able to attack me unless it's the submerged thing, which is coming up. But at the same time, either way, if I have flight or not, I'm attacking over top of the submerged things is zero different to me. At least if I have the one better thing, it'll do one extra damage over them. So I think that is the way to go. You hunched down to place her offering in your pack. When you looked up again, the ancient woman had vanished. All right, angler, angler time. Angle me. So, Gotta remember the second phase here. Once we clear the first phase, it then puts chum buckets in front of every one of my currently, um, my, my, um, out, outed units. Sounds like they're coming out of the closet. My, my, my units that are out on the board. <laughs> he appeared to be tearing chunks of flesh from his fish corpse, from a fish corpse. Some chunks were thrown back into the pond where a few ghoulish birds snapped them up, and some were sloppily pushed into the hulking man's mouth. You bring f fresh fish. Easy juice. Shouldn't you be the one with the fresh fish? Isn't that your job? It smells like fish. Stink bug in front of the kingfisher is just, it's the solid play. It's the one that we know and love. So we're gonna go ahead and squirrel down. Stink bug. Ooh, you got me. You got me in that one. So that, that's okay. Because what we'll end up doing is get the elk fawn out. Kind of a shame, I guess, to put the fledgling on the elk fawn. It already has fledgling. So they just bumped it from down here to up here. It's no different on this one. So if I did give it something different, like flight, it actually would have affected this one. But you have plenty of ones that are not the fawns that didn't already have this. The fawns. A. Hey. Anyways. Um, so sacrifice the squirrel. Then we're going to put the elk fawn. I don't know. I don't remember where he's going to put things, to be honest. Elk fawn's going to start jumping around. Maybe we don't want it to jump around. Maybe we could stick it here in the right so it's, it's stuck there. Like I said, I don't know. And then now we can put the stink bug down. And then since we did that in that order, we can now sacrifice the stink bug and get the stoat out as well. And we could put the greater smoke if we needed to, but once again, there's too many chum buckets that are coming out um, if we do this too quickly. And we might. I think next turn he's actually going to be dead considering we attack over top. All stale hard shoes. Okay, okay. I don't know if we finish him off, if he will hook or not. I think maybe last time he still did hook and then I was mad about it. Did that happen? Gosh, it was such a long time ago. So in that case, I'm just going to put a squirrel down. But here's also the thing though, if I don't, ah, ugh. Don't like that because he's gonna put four chum buckets in and then the chum buckets are, are unavoidable. I should have put flight down because then I could fly and attack over the chum buckets. I forgot that the chum buckets could be attacked. Ba 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 ba. Screw you. That would have been the, that would have been a really good answer. Might have been the only answer. 
We have spare bones and a hook. <laughs> or a hooker. I don't want him to let him take that elk. I can't let him take the elk, so we just have to put a squirrel down and see what happens. When does he hook? How does he hook? Maybe he'll hook the squirrel and there won't be a chum bucket. Maybe everything that I've ever dreamed of is a lie. Fake. He's gonna chum bucket me now, isn't he? He didn't. Okay. So putting the squirrel down was probably the worst decision of my entire life. Absolutely horrid. I'm just not okay. Long Elk doesn't have the ability still to attack the um, the dudes. Long Elk could probably be the worst thing to play right now because it's going to trigger three, two, two or three great sharks, great white sharks to come in. I think sacrificing the stoat. Is there a way I could sacrifice something? And, ah, <laughs> I hate this. What if I hook and I already have something there? Do I pull it back into my hand? Does the hook not work? Ah, I don't know what I'm gonna do it. It's gonna be wrong. That's if you just paid more attention, you'd know things that could never be known ever, possibly. I'm just guessing and I guess wrong every goddamn time. And then I second guess the next time that I guess and I re-guess over the last guess that I had and it's still wrong. We leave the squirrel there. He's not doing anything. He's not harming anybody. Flight would have been the answer. I, I actually literally have nothing and I'm pretty sure it's a guaranteed loss if I'm doing the math correctly here because I could sacrifice a number of things, right? He just totally boned me right up my bone hole. <sighs> There's literally nothing I can do right now. I can't, I don't have a card that even can, can make me sacrifice, right? I literally have to go forward with this. So we're, we're talking about great white, great white, great white. The great whites don't even attack me. They attack over me, I, I believe, because of the submerged thing. So they won't be able to kill any of these things. So I won't be able to use my hook and gravity them because there won't be an empty space there available to hook them to. And we're just going to have, what is it, like 3, 3, 3 or 4, 4, 4 damage or something like that. Even if it's 2, 2, 2, it's then going to be 2, 2, 2 versus my 1, 1, 2. And no one's going to kill anybody and nothing's going to happen. And it's over. It's over. I'm, I, it's, it's very over. It's like super unbelievably over. Why are you three? Oh, because of the stinky. They do attack me. Submerged. It's only the kingfisher with the flight that does not attack me. I can't attack them, which would have been awesome if I could because my long elk could just go ahead and take them all out. But it can't. So now we're just on a damage trade, and I literally have nothing to do any damage. And they're gonna do a bunch of damage to me. To me, bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. Mama just killed a man. You can't literally go, you, you actually can't go anywhere, Elk. Um, without dying immediately. I could throw my greater smoke out there to do nothing and die. Give me some bones. Let's just read the submerge thing again to make sure I'm not an idiot. Boop beep boop boop beep boop 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 beep boop 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 beep 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 beep. Did I miss it? Card bearing the sigil submerges itself during its opponent's turn while submerged opposing creatures attack its owner directly. Yeah. I put the long elk down right now. It would do three damage on the scale.
Uh, also put the elk down. And that'll do three damage. And then we win. I think it's now or never. Boom. So we put the greater smoke down. We sacrifice the squirrel, greater smoke. Put elk here. We then have four bones. We don't have to pop this sucker. We put the long elk down here. Six damage in, it's over. Got him. I think that was literally the, the only way to make that work. Come on, baby, let my fire. Shine or set the night on fire. Douse. Strange larva. Oh, man. Strange larva is intim not intimidating, intriguing. It intrigues me. What if it grows into like a really good thing? It's strange, right? It's cheap too. Quite blocking mole man though. <sighs> Do we have flying creatures coming up? I think we might. Es possible. This guy's got three health though. He could probably survive the first punch and then I want to know what he grows into. Knowledge is power right now with this game. Which is why I'm losing. <laughs> All right. I would have taken an amalgam. It would have been the best thing to throw me right there. Moving past the pond, you took a deep breath of fresh air and continued on. Now, not having flying elk is going to help me. Snow. Snow biome. Relief of fresh air quickly gave way to the bone shake and chill. Guess of the path ahead as the snow increasingly obscured it. Could you imagine trying to edit this down? How would I edit this down? He had uh, climbed to the snow line. Don't probably need to go for this, but we could somehow upgrade our... I mean, it, we have two items. So we can get a third item, potentially, from this. But I guess we will go here, see if we can upgrade our elk into something even better. I don't know what that would be, though. Toiki vultures. Eight bounds. We gotta go more elk. Getting costly to to get the elks out there, but if we have that stink bug available, then it'll be strong. We have a cave challenge coming up as well. Stinky elk. Elk moves to the right, which they all already do. And a canine head. How many canines do we have? Just the stunted wolf. Really? I guess we'll go stinky. I'm still gonna go elk one better. Stinky elk. Stinky elk? Stinky's actually been pretty strong. Like, really strong. That might be the, the uh, that might be the correct answer here, right? Because let's, let's think about it. The elk uh, will do an attack and then it moves over and it gives the enemy a free attack on it. So that's really the weakest part of the elk is the fact that it jumps in front of danger all the time. Um, so stinky might be good. Stinky might be good. Let's try it. They don't bathe, okay? You don't need a shower every day. A lucky draw. Yeah, I'm happy to see this guy immediately. With that in mind, we actually can put the elk down first turn. But to where? The turkey vulture is going to attack over me, but I can attack it. I'm gonna go ahead and... Oh, but maybe we can't play the elk, because I, I don't have two bones for the stink bug. 
what we can do right now is squirrel. Sacrifice the squirrel. Get the stoat out. And the stink bug. We, we could sacrifice the stoat immediately for the elk. And maybe that is the right answer. Right, possibly. I say we try it. Like I said, put the squirrel out there. Then we get the stoat out there. It doesn't matter where the stoat going because he's going to die. And then we have two bones for the stinky stink stink face. Um, we could put the stink bug in front of the turkey vulture. And it could go ahead and knock its damage down and start to um, hack away at it. It would take three turns in order for the stink bug to get him down. That's six damage coming in from the turkey vulture. We'll have to make up for with this elk. He's going to end up playing more cards. So maybe not but if we put the elk in the way then the elk is actually going to move out of the way so maybe that is the play didn't i say i was going to sacrifice my stoat to get my elk out that's not going to work immediately at least we'll stop one of the damage coming in too masterful yeah because we don't have any blood we don't have enough blood oh yeah yeah we do of course because the stink bug is there I was like, he's bones. He's, you can't sacrifice him. My brain plays tricks on me all the time. Remembering things, I guess, is not my strong suit. But yeah, we do want to do that. And then just put him anywhere. I don't think it matters because this guy can't attack and he's going to end up moving in front of you anyways. The problem now is that our, our card, our hand is empty. Strong. Strong of the vulture to do that. That vulture hadn't done that. It would have been over already. Um, so the mole, if it's attacked, not when card played. That's the difference between the uh, burrower and the the bloodhound that had the whatever sigil. We also have a, a couple raven eggs in the back that I'm a little bit worried about. The mole is going to be blocking just so that the raven eggs become hatched. Okay. Stinky elk fawn. I like it. Should be able to survive the first little bit here. If I go ahead and sacrifice the stink bug. Where would I put the stinky little elk bud? I don't think it matters. The flying creatures are going to be flying over me. Hopefully my stinky will be able to stop the flight damage coming in, right? Because I'm going to be attacking these really, really strong birds for a very long time. And they're going to be getting free damage right against me. So tipping the scales right now via this elk is crucial. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Bedimp and was a good friend of mine. I like the idea of sticking him out there. He won't be able to kill this raven egg. So doing one damage probably won't stop whatever it turns into, but we'll see if the number is either black or red. He's damaged or not. Right now, it needs to do how much damage? Elk fawn's coming in. Okay, that's a surprise actually to see, but it should be able to be. Annihilated by my elk after it does one damage to me. Um, this mole will die, then a real raven will take its place. Stinky, though. So, the elk, the, the, all the stink. Maybe the elk fall won't do any damage. Does it move, then damage, or does it damage from the back? <laughs> Hachi should have just been paying attention to the entire thing. Oh, we got that little excess extra damage that came over. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. It did. It is a red number there. Okay, so it did grow into something that didn't just... Yeah, okay. Oh, well. Mm. Next turn, well, how much do we got? Stink bug will be able to kill the turkey vulture now. This will turn into a 2-2, two -two, so it'll do one damage because stinky elk. And then, so there's three damage coming in, but I've got two here going out. So we'll, we're safe. Can't do much with the pack rat right now. Well, we got the egg. That's right. We got the egg before it grew. It grows at the end of the turn. Um, And then if I put a pack rat out there, it will be able to live and we'll get a third item. Seems pretty good. We've been using the crap out of this pack rat, which is nice. 
and I think it's over two four five no one short of over which is perfect because then we can just really tip it over the scales next turn now look at all the stinky this pronghorn like doesn't even know what to do with itself um we want to go for something with a little bit more damage if at all possible stinky pronghorn is not going to be more damage Yes, it will. No, it won't because I won't be able to kill the stink bug. Otherwise, I would put it right here and it would do an extra two damage instead of no damage here with this guy. But six damage coming in, five extra teeth is good. I'm happy. He spilled one. Dude, I better get that. Um, speaking of money, we should check the... Sometimes this gets more teeth. Yeah. I don't know how that... That's like a calculatable thing. Or what? I'm still... I don't know how to really fight the last guy, right? And we should take a look at our decks before we do the challenge guy. We have a lot of antlered creatures. We have... One... Two bugs. We have bone. 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 Three... Three boner boys. Um, we have... One cost, one cost, one cost. You have two cost, two cost. One, two, two, two. We have a lot of two cost things. Fewer one cost things. Don't have any pelts. We have three rare cards. We have a lot of move rights. So the sprinters, they're called. All right. I gotta take inventory first before we do this. I don't think I'm probably, probably not gonna be able to win the, the challenge. There's no reroll option either. Trial of Blood. The drawn cards must cost at least four blood combined. Trial of Health. Three drawn, drawn cards must have at least six health. Or Trial of Kin. Two of three must be. Two of three drawn cards must be kin. Just the same kin, I'm assuming, because it says kin up there despite the fact that it shows. A wolf. It's the same symbol they have, just the generic icon for kin card draw. And I think I gotta go kin since I have like over 50% elk. Um, I do have also a lot of two cost things, so this could also be a good play, but I think I have more elk. I, I can look again. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I got a kin, 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 kin. One, two, three, four, five. Kin. How many two cost cards do I have? One, two, th three, four, five. It's a tie. It's a tie. But I, you know what? I actually also have cards that cost one cost that still add up to it. So probably the four or more blood would be the way to go here. Six health. Um, three, four, four, one, two, one, two, four, two, three, two. Six health could also be really easy. The only way that I lose the six health is if I pull an elk fawn and a rattler together, I think. Let me draw three cards, right? So I think actually six health would be the way to do it. I, I guess we could do an elk fawn and a two cost and a two cost and that would still lose it. There's some math to be done there. I think that either any of these would be actually pretty okay choices. Surprisingly, I was like, we're screwed in this. What do we got? Trial of health. Two cost, two cost, four cost. Baby! Pass the trial. Um, oh, okay, we get a special card here and no reroll. We have a submergible bloodhound that'll move in front of empty spaces, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. We have a raven that is automatically played once a creature dies from my hand. And then we have a bullfrog that once it dies, it gives me four bones. I'm gonna go with the autoplay raven. Do we have duplicates? Yes, we could make a double elk. We could make a double elk and that would be a seven, eight elk. Is that how that would work? Cause that would be flipping dominant. Or we could keep the three four and do the two two or two four two four. Do any other duplicates of anything else? No. 
or we have to go to the right and we could maybe buff something. We'd have to do a really tough battle. And then we have the trapper. Uh, it looked like a fire to me last time. I can now see that it's the, it's the trapper symbol. Do we want more pelts? Well, there was a thing at the end that was like, if you have a pelt, then you can win and get the bonus, the buff. I'm, I'm really liking this though over here. I'm liking this. This could be potentially really dominant. So we're gonna go left. It makes sense. The two of the same thing. All the mushrooms. I didn't put two and two together. This mushroom guy. We would like to experiment. Wait. Blarp. It's only giving me the option of doing the three, two, or three, four, and the two, four. It didn't give me my two, four, two, four. So I'm going to do that. They want to avert your eyes. It should be a seven, eight. Or, sorry, I can do math. A five, eight. I don't know how, how perfect it is. It is. It's 5 8. Okay. Fly 5 8 fun with flying might be the way to go instead of doing the one better thing. No, we do. We have stinky. We have stinky right now. So uh, maybe veering to all the way to the right to do this again might be the way to do it. But we can also do this and put. bifurcated strike on our 5-8 elk. Tell me I'm wrong. Could put bifurcated strike on our raven. If you remember what we had before, we had the submergible with the trifurcate, and it was so dominant. Um... put flight blocking on somebody. I think I like the idea of bifurcated strike on my elk. We're getting rid of a lot of our antlered creatures by doing that though. So is that the right move? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, 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 no. We can try to get rid of our elk fawn too, considering we're d overlapping the. No, wait, we have stinky, we have stinky, we have stinky. We don't have one better anymore. We're not overlapping that anymore. That's fine. So much to think about. I'm gonna go bifurcate in the elk, I think. It has enough health with eight health that it can tank whatever is in front of it. We did not pull our infamous stink bug, which would have been really nice to see. It's a shame. We don't have that. We, we can't really put our elk out there immediately. And by can't really, I mean, we really can't. So we're going to go ahead and... Maybe Bullfrog will be the place to, to, to do this immediately because it's got flight blocking. Bullfrog could also kill the elk fawn next turn before it grows, but I'm, I'm a maybe a little bit more worried about the ravens. Put a stowed out next time to kill the elk fawn. Bullfrog will be able to kill the raven egg, I think, right? No, because the raven egg will move up and it'll only do one damage next turn and then it'll grow. And then maybe after that, we go elk. We sacrifice bullfrog and stoat for the elk. I don't, I don't like this setup so far. I'm really not confident about this one. Squirrel. We could put squirrel down. Sacrifice bullfrog squirrel to get elk out. Elk does massive damage, kills the fawn, and with the splash damage, kills the porcupine behind it. Right. Possibly averting the sharp quills. I think that's what I'm going to try to do. And then it's going to move to the right. Five damage should be enough to stop the 2-2 two, two 
flight damage coming in. Um, it's going to move back to the left over here where maybe this guy will play something, maybe not. Then it'll move again to the left and be able to take out this raven. And then again to the left, if I have nothing there yet, to be able to do two plus an extra two splash and kill both of those in one go. Maybe. It did take the damage from the pork. Whoa. Easy there, guy. Please. Do we want to play a stoat? Stoat won't be able to do much besides get in the way of this elk that is on an absolute rampage. So what I want to do is pull a bone card. Or I could get a squirrel up ready for next turn. And then when the elk moves over here, we either place the stoat there or we pull something and we see what else we get. I think that's the way to go. This thing is five for five damage right now. Five for five special. It should be a trade. Just for the record, it moves and then attacks. The back line. We attack and move ourselves. My autoplay raven. The flight, you can't kill the squirrel. Otherwise, I would put the squirrel out, let it take some damage and die, and then the raven will autoplay. That's not going to be the case here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and plop the squirrel down. Get that stoat on this side of the elk so the elk can do that thing that we were talking about where it's going to go and just annihilate. I don't believe that enemies with flight can attack over other birds from the back line. I don't think anything can attack from the back line. Something to think about here is that it's a 5 for 5 trade of damage right now. Next turn, it's going to, instead of attacking for 5, it's going to deal 5 directly to this raven. So it's actually, we're going to get 3 damage back. And it won't be a 5 for 5 trade. It'll be a 0 for 3, which will cause a loss. So we're, we're going to have to figure something out. Might have to hook, might have to do something. But as of right now, we're fine. Okay. Splash damage doesn't count. Sacrificing doesn't count as a death for this thing to autoplay. Um, because I could squirrel. I could squirrel right now. What? What's the health at? We can tank one extra. We're two from losing, right? One, two from losing. Um, I could put the squirrel out. I could sacrifice stoat and squirrel to put the raven on this empty space here. Right? Which would mean that it's doing two damage to them. We're taking three back, which is that one extra splash that we couldn't deal with before. By that point in time, the elk will be ready to rip and tear the raven and the raven egg. And I think if nothing else happens after that, we should be totally fine. I honestly think that is the play. Raven can't come out either, any other way. And that way we save all of our items. Right? I'm not doing something stupid, right? Raven does two damage. The stoat would have killed the sparrow, but it would have been a net gain of zero, where this is a net gain of one. So, so two damage and three coming in. Two, one, two, and three coming in. One, two, three. We should be fine if I did that math correctly. It's stupid to lose this one like, like this. Oh, that one and the he moves right. He moves. He moves. He moves. He moves. He blocks it already. Another raven coming in, but um, will will we be okay with that? 
two damage coming out one two and how much damage coming in three coming in so one two and then one two three back to the one spot with the thing with the, with the guy in the bud in the, in the place you can pull a bone card at this point in time i don't think it matters if it's squirrel or from my deck it's the pack rat not what we wanted to see here i think we're fine He's, okay, he's going to attack, kill everybody, and move back over, right? And he's going to block that damage anyways. What a tank. Yep. Order of operations is so important to remember here. Or, no, he didn't block the damage because <laughs> it's got flight. Yep. Yep. I'm. Yes, I am paying attention. Shut up. I'll surrender. No, never. Ever, ever, ever ask me to do that ever again. I hate you. And I want you to burn in hell. Seven damage coming in and one coming back out. Seven immediately, though, will tip the scales. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got to make a play now. Or forever hold our peace. What we could do is just rip like one of these items and then get a free item back via pack rat and and still be in the same situation or we could pull one of these cards i'd have to pull a squirrel if i was going to play pack rat but let's see if i can maybe get one of these bone cards and get some extra stuff in there stink bug okay that is pretty okay Could once again play the pack rat. Just don't know if I'm gonna get an item that's better than the one extra on the scale, but I think that pretty much all of the items are better than one on the scale. So that probably is the play here. Right, if we think about it, if I do a stink bug here, then I sacrifice Raven stink bug to get out my uh my pack rat and just use this item replace it with something better or i could use the four bones thing at this point in time because we are really kind of outranking the amount of bone cards we're not getting very very lucky with the bone cards it just if we were happy if we did happen to pull like the long elk and we didn't have the bones to play for it it would look real stupid yeah pop the bones Seems silly, but... Got a boulder. I... <laughs> well, I don't know if that's necessarily better, but... Uh, you know, it is what it is. You know what your guy? Could have just taken a surrender at that point in time. I wonder if there is something special, like for every surrender that you took, you also get an extra boon at the end or something like that. Because you, you clearly forewent a, 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 an obvious positive. Of having more money, that is. Are we going to be buying anything with the money? No, not really. I don't think. I don't think there's a thing coming up. Trial of blood. Four blood costs. Six health. Or wisdom. Draw three drawn cards. Must have at least three sigils among them to pass. Um, three drawn cards. All of them have to have a sigil. So we, if we did the haunted wolf stowed a rattler, we would lose... I think the six health, once again, might just be the way to go here. Given this eight. Um, the, the sigil one. Must have three sigils. This guy's got two sigils. This has got three sigils. This has got two sigils. So I think that we might be able to double dip as well. Let me go six health still, though. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> wow! We doubled it. He passed. Infinikill Mole, Infinikill Bat, and the random card. The random card could bite me in the keister. Infinite Sacrifice, right? It can't die. Uh, Infinite Dagger? No, it can't die as many times as it wants to, but we can sacrifice as, as many times as we want to. This is a pretty cheap wall, and the mole moves where I need it. This is not very cheap flight 
I'm gonna go mole. And then we don't get the reroll on that one. And then we're gonna do that thing that we talked about. But I totally remember, and then we're gonna like, yep, here goes. What we're gonna do? We were gonna put bifurcate on our 5-8 elk. Before we do that, let's make sure that we can. Am I there we go. Put our 5-8 elk up there. Yeah, that seems like that'd be a pretty sick play. So it's just so much damage, right? And the pronghorn is is honestly underwhelming. Alright. Where do we want to go from here? Probably back over to this spot. Get another one of these super cards. We go to the fire and try to buff one of our dudes. Is there one thing that really, really needs it? No. Really? Greetings. Remember how he was supposed to be a buzzkill? Elk spawn and raven eggs. Something wolf out is the strongest place. Got the most attack. It'll be able to kill one of these raven eggs before spider. Before it hatches. And then contend with the elk that will just inevitably spawn and move over. Take its place. Might be able to get the elk before it changes. I don't know when it actually grows. If it moves first, we'll see. Nothing left to do is see. Not getting very lucky here with getting um, infinite sacrifice stuff first turn. Those are always nice. Or cuppin. Or cupini. Coming up. Another raven egg. Elk fawn is no longer moving to the right. I'm not sure how that's going to change that. I think it actually still will. If I'm not mistaken. Do we want to get a bullfrog or the stoat out? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. It's not setting us very strong for the next turn, though. And they don't, they just don't do enough damage. Bullfrog is flight block. We could get that on the raven egg on the right, I guess. And then hopefully sacrifice it before it dies next turn. I don't know. Is it worth it? You're going to play it? It's going to attack if we once, not kill it. It'll hatch. And then it'll get killed next turn. It will. It will be able to kill it next turn. It'll attack first. Unless, was the, was the raven a 2-3? Raven is 2-3, I think. Raven's 2-3, I think. I don't think the bullfrog will be able to kill it, so I'm just putting it there to potentially be sacrificed in the future. Which kind of seems silly. I could pop my boulder to block something if I if I really, really needed to, I guess. If I put the stoat there, the stoat can't block the raven. So at least it'll block the two damage coming in. Stoat will be able to kill it, though, eventually, but will be soaking the two damage per turn until then. I don't know what the right play is. Don't know. Go for the stoat kill, I guess. Probably end up sacrificing the stoat anyways at some point in time. Before that even comes to pass. Porcupine. Okay, the porcupine blocked. The, uh elk from moving over, which is not its not good news for me. Good lord! You're going to attack the porcupine and die next turn. <sighs> you will attack the porcupine and die next turn, which will give this a free lane. So on the next turn, we will have zero damage going out and two, three, four, five damage coming in. Even if we were to put this boulder here to block the elk. 
Thunderbolt attacks. Right. Elk will attack and move over and block the sparrow. So it'll be four damage coming in, not five. But I can't put anything here or here, as in this boulder, to block anything. Because, ah, Jesus Christ. This, honestly, okay, once again, currently feeling that this is a, a guaranteed loss. Um, elk moves over. Nothing is here, but I can't place my boulder to block it. Doesn't need to block. It's going to do the two damage here anyways. The two damage is already on us. Then it moves over. This hatches. I don't know if it attacks upon the turn. It hatches. And then the raven will do two free damage. And I literally have absolute shit up my hand. And I don't think any amount of pliers or this boulder is going to do anything at all. Like, actually will do nothing. It's two damage until we lose. And there's a guaranteed two damage via Raven. There is zero way that we can do any damage past their complete stacked line. The only way that I see out of this, you guys, is if we used up every single one of our items. Sacrifice the stone. Put the bullfrog there. The bullfrog at least blocks the raven, dies in the process. We boulder this far left side. Blocks the elk. No damage trade. We're in rough shape. Nobody. We have zero things on the front line. We just spent an item for what? See what we could pull here. Raven auto plays on the stunted wolf. Where it'll take an elk to the face. <sighs> it's worth a shot. Like that. I did say boulder far left. It has to go there. Because... We'll start with the loss of that two damage coming in, if I don't. Boulder's not doing anything though, right? It's not killing the elk. So I just don't understand how we're gonna trade anything. How we're gonna start to get on the uh, offensive here. It did attack. Okay. It didn't matter. It it hatched and attacked the same turn. It's painful to see. Yeah, you're a bitch. And I hate you and I want you to rot in hell. Who is this? Trapper lady. Pelt slash trapper lady. I don't remember what happened on that flight. I'm so flustered with everything else. Trial power, three drawn card, must have at least four attack power. Must be five bones combined. Or sigils, so I think it's gotta be sigils in this one. Four power, I mean, we pulled this and we're good, but there's uh, some ones and some zeros in there. Power could, could do it, but I think sigils is a little safer. Assuming that we can count two sigils. Yes, yes, yes. Five sigils. Three from the elk. Three? I guess it's counting the move right twice. Oh. 
pack rat cat. Five bone corpse maggot. Or the burrowing skink. Auto play get free bones corpse maggot, I guess. Cat's pretty cool too for one of these uh, sacrifices as many times as you'd like, but we really don't need three in our deck. If we we're able to pull multiple of them, that would be that'd be a bad situation. I like the idea of the pack rat thing, but you know, it's, this might be a little stronger. One last little thing here to imbue. What do we want to imbue and for what? Maybe get better. Strange larva. I haven't even seen it yet. Here's our possible things to imbue. What are we using a lot of? Probably the elk. Be the strongest thing to imbue. You know what? Possibly the stoat or the bullfrog, since we pretty much get them. One of these three, we can make them better, and it'll make our first turn better, which is, I think, really, it's where we're struggling. We could take the bullfrog's flight block and put it on the stoat. We could do the elk fawn move right, get better. We could take the strange larva, get better. I still think that the strange larva is going to have something up its sleeve. We could take the pack rat item thing. What are we going to do? do, 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 do. Probably bullfrog blocking on the stoat since we end up getting these two like the first turn like almost every single time this is honestly just a play to get rid of the bullfrog is there anything else like right i i, I think that if we were able to buff one of our strongest creatures but we can't it doesn't allow us to double up The other sigil, hooray. It seemed weak. It seems weak, but like I said, I think our first turn is where we're struggling. And it's almost, it seems like we're guaranteed to get stink bug, stoat, or wolf. Looking at familiar sights and scents of the trapper's pelts, but something was different. The once friendly man be now beheld you with a steely gaze. I'm afraid I must ask. I must be skinning you today. Long elk, the longest elk. That's right, okay. Anything that kills a leaping trap dies. When a card bearing the sigil perishes, the creature opposing it perishes as well. A pelt is created in my hand. Was there a reason to get some pelts in my hand? Would I want to get some of those pelts and then I could use those pelts to block something coming in from his side, but then hey, not doing any damage, so I don't think that's very smart. <sighs> don't like this start. I'm almost guaranteed to get one of those cards. Doesn't get those cards. Literally every single turn I've ever had in my entire life, I've had one of those three cards. Only turn that I don't have it is when I call that out and say I'm going to get that card. <sighs> Mole could block everything coming in without doing any outward damage. But will will not perish. It won't perish, but I'm not doing anything. Right? I mean, four bones, six bones. Remember that jar of bones that I used because it was stupid and I would never start with that many bone cards? <laughs> The game listens to you, it knows what you're saying, it knows your play, and then it just goes right against it every time. It's it's magical, really. It's it's a sight to behold. The burrower doesn't matter where you are. Porcupine burrower. Porcupine mole would have been the best thing ever. Long elk, once again, horrible here because it's gonna end up attacking the leaping traps and and, and die. Unless this uh, touch of death, like, outright kills the strange frog without spawning a leaping trap, which I highly doubt. Yeah. 
Elkis Faunus. It's pretty nice. It's gonna grow. But what is it gonna do? Go down the line and attack and attack and attack and attack until it hits a leaping trap and dies? Yeah. That's exactly what it's gonna do. Put it here and the mole will move there to block. Put it here, it attacks, and then it'll move. Sure. How much damage do we have coming in? <sighs> Just one damage coming in. Mole will be dead. Which is a shame, because being able to infinitely sacrifice that would be cool. Remember we have our one thing and our other one thing? You know, the things. You're going so slow. Dude, I, I have to go this slow. Was that two damage coming in? No, no, it wasn't because the mole block. I think at this point in time, I think I have to uh, take a squirrel, right? I don't know if it matters. I don't know if it matters. Would have been nice. Might be able to see what the strange larva does this time. Too bad the elk's not doing any excess damage to damage that elk coming in. The elk's gonna move over. This elk's gonna move down. No, it's not, because it's gonna be blocked by the leaping trap. The bullfrog is gonna move down. Here's the issue that I'm having right now. with the squirrel. Sorry, the strange larva. I put the squirrel down, I get the strange larva out there. For what? For what? Right. What does it do? Nothing. It then grows, it attacks, and dies. Instantly. Elk moves over. Elk kills the strange frog, moves over. Next turn, it's going to kill the leap trap, die. I can then put my strange larva there. And we'll be one away from death at that point in time. And we'll have to just hope and pray that something miracle, magical happens. Which it probably won't, and we'll be dead. Will that elk take the place of that bullfrog? So once we kill the bullfrog, the elk will be there? I'm gonna move back left, I think, though. So whenever I get this strange frog here knocked down, really would have been nice if it was dead. Then the elk will just move into that split, that space, and we might have to hook it. I just, I really don't know about this. I think, like I said, we have to pass this turn. It sounds so stupid. Pass this turn, take one damage on the nose. Pass the next turn, take one damage on the nose. Just to get a little larva out that actually does nothing. So wh how do we win? <laughs> when does the wind come? It doesn't. The wind never comes. Do I want more squirrels or do I want another item to try to do something here? <sighs> Once this elk dies, I'll have four bones, I'll be able to play the long elk. A long elk could go here, I guess. And kill the strange frog and re remove a leaping trap, which will allow this elk to come forward. Ooh. 
No, I don't like that. That's a stupid idea. You could play the squirrel and put the strange larva on the left. Then it'll kill the strange frog and then the leaping trap and die. Which made it pointless. We don't know what it does. It probably grows into something really good. Like instead of plus one, plus one, it's plus two, plus two. I hate this game. It's nothing but stress and pressure. It's horrible. Why are you playing it then? That bothers me. I'm so bothered. I'm, I'm lost. I lost it. You guys, I lost it. I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say. I'm thinking about a hundred things I can do right now, and my mind just shit itself. What were we even doing? We're waiting for that right spot to open up so I can play a strange larva. Carry on. Right toe. We squirrel far left. Play the carry on boy. And carry on my wayward son. Who kills the strange frog. Next time we sacrifice the stunted wolf to get the strange larva on the far right. So no one's contesting these traps. It's all on the strange larva who's going to kick ass. And this elk's gonna be like, I can't get through, I can't get through, and won't be able to do shit. Right? Does that makes sense? No, it didn't. Alright. Made a bit of damage coming in. Hurts. Hurts me to get rid of that um, elk, but. Adder coming in. How many bones? Okay, what were we doing? I blacked out. Strange larva. I won't allow you to play a card before you draw. And okay, I was like, wait, I fucked up. Oh, God. I don't think it matters if I pull a squirrel or not. Flight blocking stoat. Farewell. One damage away from losing. You don't have flight, you have flight block. Nothing happens next turn besides we take a one hit damage and hopefully next turn we grow into something really, 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 really strong. Strange larva, don't upset me. Maybe it continues to have the fledgling ability, right? So every turn it starts growing. At the end of the turn, does he kill every single one of my dudes and turn them all into pelts? If I remember correctly, I'm actually just, I don't remember, so I'm just assuming that that's what happens. Strange pupa. Oh shit. Hopefully next turn. It's gotta be next turn. You have to do it next turn, otherwise you are actually dead. Like, 100% dead. What am I doing? Wolf. Mothman! It's got flight. <laughs> Mothman was gonna do 7 damage and then dip set. But, uh, oh, I was gonna say it's gonna kill that wolf. No, it ain't, because it's got flight. Okay. Don't know what to say. My long elk can't do anything, because if I put my long elk there, then it's going ahead. It's gonna kill that leaping trap first. And it's gonna die. I thought the elk was gonna switch spots, and it's just gonna go left from there. Isn't that how that always works? I think that's always how it works. Unless it doesn't activate until it gets to this level. Unless it's been moving back and forth, then I'm just not even paying attention because I'm too busy with everything else. I have enough to pay my play my rattler right now, which mm, would kill the bullfrog, not the wolf. I 
could put it on the far left, right? A rattler on the far left, and then it, it kills the leaping trap plus the adder and clears this path. And then what do we do on the right path? We just... I don't know. Didn't we want pelts? We wanted pelts for the second half? We want our units to die and turn into pelts? Potentially. It's right over here. Rattler might honestly be better used here on the right. Nobody's doing two damage though, so I wouldn't be able to clear this left lane with anything but my Rattler. Corpse maggot autoplay. So when my Mothman dies, my corpse maggot will jump in its place. We'll get a bunch of bones, which will be good for either the long elk or the rattler. We could rattler here, right? Kill off both of these things. We could stoat here, kill this leaping trap, which will give me a spot next turn to put my long elk on the far left where it won't just immediately die. But if something comes up with higher than three attack power, or two higher than two attack power, long elk will perish because it gets a free strike. Um, and then we, we're gonna put the corpse, the corpse snake is automatically gonna go down here and it'll contest the bullfrog next turn where it will eventually kill the bullfrog, but then I could go against that wolf and it'll lose horribly. And maybe the rattler should have been saved for that fight. I could just wait right now for the mothman to jump over, right? Next turn, like I said, corpse maggot's there, corpse maggot confronts the bullfrog. Once that that's all done with and the wolf comes down and destroys my corpse maggot, I get a bunch of bones. None of these guys are doing anything at all. And we put our rattler there, which eats away at that wolf. It's really the only thing we have right now that could do that. So like I said, we sit here and we do nothing. How much damage is going out? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll be two away from winning. And we'll be in a, a, a lock, a standstill. And we'll just have to make it through that wolf. Once again, though, at the same time, maybe we want more pelts because the pelt lady's coming up, but I don't remember what she wants from me. If she clears everybody in my front line and turns them into pelts, if she takes the pelts out of my hand, I wish I remembered. Mothman. This guy's got flight block. He's got flight block. He's got flight block, guys. He's got flight block. So maybe that wolf will die. Maybe the excess damage will actually carry on to the wolf because of the flight block. Wasn't even looking at that. Mothman will be okay for this one turn, potentially, unless it kills the bullfrog. Doesn't kill the wolf. The wolf then comes up and monches right through Mothman. I don't think excess damage comes off onto me. That is not a thing that I've been aware of. So that should be fine. Please kill the wolf. If you're being blocked. That was an important step there that I almost missed because I was seven steps beyond it already. This is like conspiracy theorists. Like you, when you're building one conspiracy theory off another conspiracy theory off another one, you gotta go all the way back to the beginning and make sure the first one that you were doing was actually like, it made any sense at all. Okay, I think I can pass. Am I dumb? God, I'm probably forgetting something and not seeing it once again because I'm, I, I kind of bypassed step one. Seven damage now coming in uncontested. You're beautiful, Mothman. Let's just say that we don't play the pelts. We don't want the pelts. We don't want to put anything out there right now. And we play us we grab a squirrel, I guess. I don't know. We'll be able to load our deck before phase two. I just wish I knew what phase two was. 
You gotta play this a couple times in order to, put, uh, to to commit these things to memory, you guys. So much in the game. And we've been live for two and a half hours right now. So much happens between these fights. We got two squirrels on hand. It's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw something here and hope that it's just like delicious. Raven. An autoplay when if something dies, the raven goes. You know, it, 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 there's something to be said here for me throwing out... Um, like uh like a like a stoat that would attack the leaping trap die auto play the raven but i i think that that could be done next turn as well it's too bad the extra damage here doesn't apply to the next phase right mothman was good mothman was good i was disappointed but it was that clutch flight block random bullfrog play that he had i wasn't even looking for it it's the end of my turn Let's trade. Oh, that's right. Depending on how many pelts I have, I get to actually take some of their cards. I have two pelts. Okay. Shit. <laughs> um. I have a hook as well. I have a hook as well. I hope you brought pelts. So I think I probably want to... If I grab this grizzly from the, the pelt lady, and then I hook to the pronghorn, next turn, the pronghorn could kill the bloodhound and the rattler in one go. The raven's gonna move, which is gonna clear away for, my, for the flight blocking grizzly, which is not good doing two damage. Rattler will not die. Here's the thing. If I leave the right lane alone, if I leave the right lane alone, then the... No, wait a second. The Mothman will be dead. The Mothman will get hit by the Pronghorn. It has an insta-kill. Um... Okay, back to square one. Because I was going to say, this, this is flight, flight, and then this is flight. So no, none of these things can attack each other, and it's a seven to three uh, damage trade. Once again, the pronghorn ruins that for me. And I don't know if I can hook the back line and pull it all the way into my side. I'm going to assume probably not. So I take... The Great White Shark. <laughs> and the Grizzly? That just sounds dumb because I won't be able to play him. It's too expensive. Whatever we do, we got to get that pronghorn out of there. Pronghorn can't attack the Great White. It just can't happen. The Bloodhound might jump in front of something. I don't know how the Bloodhound's gonna act when I'm hooking things. The Raven is a problem because of the fact that it's got two damage coming in with flight and it moves over and it makes way for that back end Grizzly. but my pronghorn will be able to kill it. So let's say, okay, let's say I get, grab the grizzly and the great white. What happens after that? Or maybe the grizzly and the grizzly. Then next turn, we, we, we have to hook the pronghorn as well. We hook the pronghorn down. Next turn, this grizzly that I took, there's nothing there to attack the pronghorn, which will have fair game to kill both the Bloodhound and the Rattler, assuming the Bloodhound did not move upon Hook. Right? Okay, so that, that happens. We get seven damage for free, and it's over. 
It's over. We start at, we start at zero, and the seven damage is enough. In fact, we could probably do nothing this turn, and the Mothman will still pull a victory straight out of its moth little butt. So I think that's the play here. I think I don't have anything else to worry about. Hmm, very well. So I don't even think I have to hook. Am I stupid? Am I stupid? Am I stupid? Am I missing something? Am I dumb? What am I- what am I missing here? You guys, what am I missing? We should be golden. Right now. But just in case we're not, should we play something down? Do double squirrel. Do stoat blocking on the raven. Stinky long elf. Long elk, I mean. Yeah, we can do a long elk here and it, we just kill, kill, kill. Kill Bill. Like I said, the Mothman, I think, is golden. I think it's golden. I think it's a great idea. A long elk should be able to... I want you to play a card before you draw a new one. In case we needed that Scrizzly, I guess. I, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters, you guys. Or dominant, stinky, bifurcate elk. I do believe that would just, like, pretty much solve all the problems. We could get our elk down as well if we really wanted to. I mean, I don't think it's really necessary. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna mess it up. Sometimes you mess things up by trying to go too hard. Right? And you're like, shit, I should have just accepted my victory. But I don't think that this is that situation. I think I should be able to do like a this and a this and a play their super dominant elk. Pretty surprised that even if we hadn't had these super overpowered cards, and even if we didn't have Mothman for the... I mean, okay, w without the Mothman, our super overpowered cards would be able to probably handle it. But it's only because I was able to sit there and rack up a bunch of shit prior. Mothman, just end it. Tell me you're going to end it right now. Long elk with the, with the, yeah, that's dope. That's super dope. I'm, I'm telling you, it sounds dumb, you guys. I was really worried that I was gonna blow that somehow. Like, I was like, oh, I've done this so many times where I thought I had it and I just, it was an idiot. Ah, this game makes me doubt myself. It's bad. Gek, pack rat, and douse. Daos could be a good play if we have nothing else to play, and just because of the bell thing. Gek, okay, the, the thing with the Gek is that it's a free play. It's free blood, right? But it's not a free card pull. It might absorb one of our card pulls that we needed for something else. I'm going to take it, though, since we have a lot of high-cost stuff. That's why I'm like, the Gek is terrible, Gek is terrible. It's not that bad. Mystery of the Trapper and the Traitor occupied your thoughts as you wandered onwards. The light in the distance caught your eye. What a long episode, you guys. A long episode. Not plural. Um... Do we even have any pelts? To sell to the pelt... Pelter? No. Do we have items that we'd like to gain? We have two items so far. That would seem silly, so I think that we're gonna have to do the apply a buff to somebody. Um, if I put the strange larva buff on something else, I'm assuming it's not going to be the strange larva special fledgling, but it would instead be the normal fledgling, which would be a really big bummer. Um, putting stinky on the strange larva would be dope. But it's got this thing, so I think that takes it out of the potential stuff and the things with the place and the guy and the thing. We could. Mm. Put pack rat on something so we don't have to worry about pulling pack rat. It's kind of lame. It's kind of lame. 
We have the move. We have the get better, which I wouldn't strip from. I want to put something on the strange larva, to be honest. We just we have nothing here, nothing here. We have to work with this card, this card, this card, and this card. We pretty much would have to put pack route on something. Maybe one item would be better than that. Maybe not. Maybe putting pack rat on something cheaper would be the play there, like the 2-2 stunted wolf instead of having a 2-2 pack rat, which is kind of a waste of blood. I guess. So, pack rat. Blah, 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 blah. Don't you blood 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 me right now? Did you just blood 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 me? Put the pack rat in the geck. It's just like a free thing, right? But I think that we're going to get the wolf probably first. Doesn't really matter. It shouldn't matter, right? Tell me it doesn't matter. Taste of my former glory. <laughs> He's like, you're going to power me up. I turn him into a pack rat. You now have to carry bags. Warm light of the cabin cut through the thick fog. Surely your tribulations ended here. I'm not even sure we'll be able to make it past the first uh, trapper dude. Remember, he killed off every single one of my units immediately. I have to pee so bad, you guys. I have to pee, like, big time. I'm gonna drink water. I'm crazy. I have the Elder Eye. Is that gonna tell me something? Great boons of uh, Leshy's Woods are here. Trial of the Winged. The three drawn cards must include a card with the Airborne Sigil. Trial of Skins. Pelt card, we don't have any. Trial of the Ring. If you have a ring, you pass automatically. Uh, I bet she's gonna cut off my finger or something. It's gonna be an only like a one-time use, because we do have a ring on. He's gonna take it off. Trial of the Ring, begin. Oh, you are wearing a fine ring. You pass, of course. You may choose. He didn't cut off my finger. Okay. Maybe it's free. Boon of Goat's Blood, you will start the battle with a black goat on the board. Boon of the Forest, you will start the battle with Grand Furs in all your spaces. Problem here, arising with the Goat Blood, is that we could kill the goat off and put a bunch of units out there, but they are going to immediately be turned um, into... No, sorry, it's not the pelt guy. It's the gold guy that hit me first. It's going to turn them all into gold anyways. So maybe we don't want to start this to get a bunch of shit out. Because they're going to be turned anyways. Magpie's Eye. When you draw from your deck, you may choose any card from your deck to draw. Probably the Magpie Eye again. It didn't really do us justice last time, but we got screwed by the not, not having knowledge of how to get past the first phase. Maybe. With the furs, do you think the furs would be any good? No, because when we pass the first phase, once again, we're going to be stuck um, with a bunch of gold nuggets where those furs were, if the furs lived. I don't like this at all. Trail of the Fiend. I don't have any Waterborne. Swift would be a good one. Got it. One of the Ambed Extras, you may draw twice at the beginning of your turn. Boon of the Forest, you start the battle with Grand Furs and Goat's Blood. I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I'm gonna do the same thing here, but I... Uh... What if we started with our dominant Elk and, and this would just like... really make a huge difference? I don't know, It's gonna he's gonna end up killing it. I hate this, I hate this. I think we had our Ancestral Eye last time we were here, so I don't think there's going to be any... Impressive. I don't do this often, but you did it last time. Looks like you do kind of do it often, don't you? I relish this moment.
Two flames will not suffice this time. It just almost seems like we gotta have a busted build. I don't know if it matters, the timing. If he's trying to warn us that, like, once I make a move, it's gonna lock into one of these masks that he's already wearing. You can't see the masks when you're looking at the board, so I don't... I don't understand. It's probably scripted. Mole Man blocking with um, an amalgam coming in. We did get our super dominant elk first turn and also our Gek. So we could honestly go ahead and just play him and get him out. If I play him here, then um, I'm going to attack and the Mole Man will automatically jump in front, blocking the amalgam from doing anything. And we waited out and we just, we let him take our elk maybe. Ah, shit, I don't know, man. Getting our strange larva out would be pretty dope. Maybe we put a greater smoke out and we put our strange larva out so that he can start pumping away. But once we get to that second phase, then they, that guy's dead. So strange larva possibly, on the second phase I'm saying, I mean after the first turn, he turns everything into gold. I think we gotta, I, we gotta go big here. We gotta go big in the first turn. And then we can do Squirrel, Gek, and Elk. It's really a shame we don't get a, a second pull here. Put him here because then he can jump in front of the Amalgam and block him. Our Elk is gonna move though is the problem. So yeah. I guess maybe that, you know. Still gonna block the amalgam from moving forward one turn, so we, we did gain some, some time there, I think. So when I turn this, let's see if it if it actually matches the mask. So I kinda wanna do the pelt lady, maybe? What would she do? I don't know. Oh, it's bifurcated strike. So many things to pay attention to. So the amalgam will be dead next turn. And there's a mantis god coming up. That's right, he had a bunch of mantis gods. Anything that I put forward right now, next turn will be hit for one from the mantis god. I could put something in the far right, it'll be safe. No. Probably want to pull something from my deck that costs one. He didn't gold strike me. I don't know what that's about. Was it two turns that he gold strikes me? And finna sacrifice mole. Auto play on Death Raven. Single cost Elk Fawn. Something to kill this dude coming up, maybe? Do a stinky uh, dude to block that guy. Does that make any sense what I just said? I like the idea of that. Stinky bro. Put him there. That'll kill the Mole Man as well. And the elk next turn will get a free five damage back on him. Kill the amalgam. Tell me I'm wrong. The stinky will stop the mantis god from dealing any damage. And then, what? Prepare for next turn with a squirrel? Do I want to do anything else? I don't think I want to do anything else. Yeah, look, he's ready. He's ready to go. He's already got the mask on, so we already know what's going to happen. Did it happen at the start of my turn or the, or the end of my turn? I think at the end of my turn. I don't remember if it's at the start of my turn. I will literally shit on the floor for everyone to see. Good. 
That's a that's a hard hit there to lose all of those things. Our most dominant card, I would say. Two amalgams coming up with a mantis god also pumping in damage. I have to pee, man. We hook one of the amalgams. We can tank. We can't take six damage. And in fact, it's not going to be six damage. It's going to be eight damage next turn. We might have to try and hook one of them now and hope that we can pull them over from the back. It might not even allow us to do that. Once I click on it, it might only say the Mantis God is available. Which is, might not even be a thing considering there's a gold nugget there. I don't know, you guys. I really don't know. Who would we get back to fight against three amalgams coming in? Maybe just two squirrels to tank. Maybe greater smoke to get the bones. Maybe we block it with two squirrels, let the mantis god kill the golden nugget, and next turn we play our elk, which will kill amalgam, mantis god, and the amalgam. Long Elk, that is. We could do that. We could also pull a Raven. No, we can't. We need to... I'm going to go for the Long Elk play here. We'll need to lose at least one Squirrel for this to happen. We have a Squirrel and a Greater Smoke. So here's the thing. I either play a squirrel to soak up damage, to block three damage coming in. And tank three damage, right? Which we can do, we can't. There's gonna be five damage, two extra coming from the Mantis Gods. We gotta block both the lanes. The bell, oh, it's not gonna work. It's still not gonna work because we have squirrel, squirrel. Next turn, Amalgam comes up, smacks the squirrel. Mantis God gets one free damage, kills the Golden Nugget, another free damage. That's two damage, and there's nothing here. Amalgam takes it to five, and we lose. If we go, if we, yeah, so let's say we had Squirrel Squirrel. Amalgam comes in, hits the Squirrel, dead. Mantis God deals one damage to me, kills the Squirrel. Amalgam comes in, dealing three damage, that's four, we're one from being dead, with two squirrels out there. Assuming he doesn't play anything at all in the next turn, we could kill everything with our long elk. And be fine. But that's probably not going to be the case. Do we want to play our greater smoke to get bones back? Because then we could just pull from our hand and get something that takes bones next turn. Like our stink bug that's infinitely sacrificable, but two turns from now, he's probably gonna wear a mask and hook me back. He's gonna hook me next turn. So we'll have to have a squirrel for that. I think double squirrel play makes the most sense, but we're kind of sitting, we're, we're, it's a risky, it's a risky play because whatever he plays next turn is probably gonna get us. Once again, double squirrel play. Blocks the three damage. Mantis God does one damage to me and then three damage comes in. That's a double squirrel play without doing anything else. We're waiting for the gold nugget to, to pair so that we can long elk. I'm gonna have to pee. Like, I am just gonna have to pee. I'm, I'm peeing right now, I have to.
back. Okay. Um, I think, I think that the amalgam goes first because it's on the left and the mantis god doesn't go first and then give the back string. I don't know why I think it is strange things. Afterwards. I think we're okay. Oh boy. All stale hard shoes. Alright, we're going to have to take into account the hook coming in. We need the long elk now, first, so that he doesn't hook the long elk. Long elk is the clutch play here. Stop it, draw a card, damn it. We probably want to end with at least one squirrel, and then we're probably going to put the strange larva on one of the spaces so that he could start growing. Seven damage flight could get us through an entire phase. But once he blows out one of the candles, he might do something real stupid like kill all of my stuff. Let's just hope and pray that's not the case. Because he's already killing all of my stuff. <sighs> okay. We need one squirrel, right? And we want one of something else. What do we want of something else? Probably another squirrel so that we can play a squirrel and get it's a, it's a shame that like we can't put a squirrel where this golden nugget is because he's gonna grab the squirrel and the squirrel is perfect blocking he can have the squirrel it takes up one of his lanes but my long elk is gonna kill it next turn but two squirrels because then we can sacrifice one next turn for the strange larva i guess seems silly but Long elk. New fish, easy choose. And then he takes a squirrel. And we call it. And it's it's dead, dead, dead. Better be freaking dead, dead, dead. We're not putting any damage on the board yet, by the way. Oh, we're not gonna kill the squirrel yet because the long elk is on the far left. He didn't play anything at all. We want to get that strange larva out there. I guess we could have probably played the strange larva first and then ended with the squirrel and we could have gotten one free turn on the strange larva. Probably should have done that. Probably should have done that. So I'm going to probably put the strange larva to block the long elk from moving over, maybe. I don't know, though. I don't know, though. Long elk maybe is better here, even if it kills the squirrel. Probably is, even if it does kill the squirrel. Long elk, probably better here. Still gonna be moving between these two spaces, so I'm not sure really what to expect. We have to draw. If we were to draw something, is there something coming in? He doesn't have a mask on yet. Maybe Pelk Lady. Pelt, not Pelk. Um. Having one of these auto play cards could be huge. I feel like we're getting low on cards, oddly enough. Maybe an infinite sacrifice mole is a good one to play. Get him out there. And then. How many bones do we have? Two bones. Do we need another squirrel for anything? We get the squirrel, we can play the mole. We now have a mole out there to get at least one blood for the strange larva. And then we go for the autoplay four bone corpse maggot. Okay. So we want to let this guy move over. So we're going to squirrel. We're going to mole. And then we're going to strange larva. Well, we're not actually going to let him move over. Right, because the strange larva is moving there. Whatever. So that squirrel lives. It's fine. Pelt lady. Our long elk is dead. Big time. Long elk super dead. Didn't see this Uriuli coming in. 
We really would be strong if the Long Elk was stuck here instead, because then the Long Elk would have been able to kill it without having to... Ah. The only way that I could think about doing that is by sacrificing my strange pupa. Pupa. Then the Long Elk would attack and move and be able to get a free shot off on this Uriuli. Or we keep the strange pupa there, which turns into the seven flying. Hope it doesn't play anything here that can come down and kill it because it's going to be pretty low on health, I think. I hate this because I don't know what's coming. We let the Uru Yuli come in. But what is she going to do with the pelts, by the way? What does that even mean? What happens with that? She kill my all my front line and then turn them into pelts and then lay a bunch of shit out there? Don't know. We believe in strange pupa. I guess. Corpse Maggot's gonna auto play there. Which is fine, because that'll block the seven damage coming in next turn. Assuming that that's a thing. This is such a mess. This is such a mess, such a mess, such a mess, such a mess. This is such a mess. This is such a mess. This is a ginormous mess. If the Uro Yuli steps up, we're gonna hook it. We're gonna have to hook it and take it. We're gonna need that. And maybe some flight damage coming in with the Raven. We can't hook it though if the freaking mole jumps in front of it, goddammit. And then the mole's gonna die, and then the autoplay things are gonna come into play and continually block that guy, and I don't know if we're ever gonna be able to hook it, so we're just gonna hopefully block it until our strange pupa can do something and hope nothing attacks the pupa! <sighs> Is what we're gonna do, probably. Pack rat? Pack rat wolf? Don't know. If you think I know, I don't. It's me. Hello, it's me. Fight blocking in case they throw something really weird at us. Yeah, and then we just do nothing. I hate this. I hate this. Wolf pelt. Trade for what you can, but know this, the rest will stay and fight for me. Mm, I don't know what the mirror does. Remember, it had a mirror symbol for attack, so I'm thinking that maybe this mirror is going to do nothing. We could just take the Ura Yuli now, but we won't be able to sacrifice enough to get it. I think I'd rather hook it. Oddly enough. How is that going to be? Like, how is that making any sense? Does that make any sense? Taking it now just means I don't have to, I can hook something else and just never play the Uriuli, right? But hooking it means I get to play it for free. But if I don't hook it now, it's gonna kill my long elk. My brain is fried again. We'll take it, I guess. We have a spiky bloodhound coming in. Is that a thing that I need to worry about? It automatically moves to something that's attacking an empty space? Only when a creature's placed on an uh, uh, opposite, uh, opposite of a blank space. This is a good combo though. Just blocking it. Just completely blocking that lane. Who are you? I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I don't, I don't even know. I wish you had an auto play on you. Kill. We'd have to kill four things in order to get the Ura Yuli out. It's just probably not going to happen. Oh, I get to draw now. Um, 
Wait, what am I doing? <laughs> Where am I? Squirrel, I guess. I'm not playing any cards, so I don't think it matters. And this should tilt the scales in my favor. We got the first phase done. Are they going to kill all of my units after the first phase? Because I kind of need everything. You capably endure the onslaught of rare creatures, but the true challenge was forthcoming. Shadowy figures appear before you. In their eyes glimmered a recognition of kinship, but colored by guilt. They were betraying you. I remember that one fondly. Luis and I hate you. Those are the ones that, that was a me, it's me. But here's the deal, I've got flight and I'ma jump yo ass. Wait, my long elk is it a kill? My long elk will kill the stump in the grand fur. We, we can handle that, we can handle that because it's already gonna be over via Mothman. But then the next turn, Luis is gonna go jump up which is fine at the moment. We might just be able to Mothman, Mothman, and have this whole thing be over. But here's the deal. Like I said, if I kill my long elk and then let my Mothman jump over the Grand Fur once, twice, probably he's probably going to remove the Grand Fur at the end of this turn. So maybe it's okay that it dies anyways. Louise can't do anything to Mothman currently. So we just maybe we just kind of just put our head down and we just keep going. I hate you is coming up too. It's got flight and submerge. I could hook one of them if need be at any point in time, right? Um, we don't have, I don't know if there's a mask coming up, so I, I can't see it. it. Won't let me see it. So let's just like do the rattler in case we get a bunch of, in case everyone dies, we can rattler. And get a squirrel, I guess, for some shielding. The masks are still going around. Maybe the masks are still going to be a thing. If you prospect or kills my Mothman, we're in trouble. But this should be next phase immediately. This damned moon. It's dramatic, yes? It provides no value to my board, I wonder. The moon! Now that is value. Flight blocking, 40 health, and zero damage on all four of my things. Zero damage because my long elk is probably blocking it. What is this? Tidal log. At the beginning of its owner's turn, a cart bearing this sigil will push small creatures like squirrels into its orbit. I, I don't know if these are all small creatures. possible that it was doing two damage to everything, right? And because Long Elk can bifurcate to one, two, it stinks one, two? Probably not. Probably not how it works. But I'm, I'm assuming it's going to continually, maybe it sucks one thing at a time into its orbit. That would make sense. One at a time. This has a insta-kill. When a card bearing the sigil damages another creature, I don't think the moon is going to be a creature. But otherwise, if it is, it's dead immediately. If it is, it's dead. And I don't, can I hook it? What if I could hook the moon? Pull the, the last card, I guess. Slow down, you will first need to draw a card. Nah, now, there's nothing that can be hooked. You're a cheater. You're a big phony. I feel like maybe using this right now, just in case. Something stupid happens. Something stupid's gonna happen. I'm gonna pull my tooth and just preemptively. Suck it, dude. It had to have flight blocking. Hook it, hook it, hook it, hook it, hook it! I can't play anything. I could sacrifice something. I guess I could sacrifice the mole. I can't sacrifice the mole. It's got infinite sacrifice, so it never goes away. Mothman is the best damage we have, and Long L could potentially murder it immediately, so I don't think there's anything that we have to do.
You really destroyed the moon. I suppose all that that's left to do is finish me off. Baby! Okay, where's the camera? Where's the... Give me the camera. I got the roll. Go on. Oh my, did I just, I think I just beat him. This would be a time when I would stop the recording. We're three hours in. Can I pick it up here? Can I press the escape button without ruining all of this? Let's just click on one of these to make sure. I, I don't know. You guys. Oh, Guess I'm going to watch them. Hey there, card gamers. I'm the Lucky Carter, and this is another pack opening video. Today, I am opening Catch Monsters packs and digging for that epic, shiny Transcend Dog! And here I'll add some crazy VFX with lightning bolts or something. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am about to open my first pack. Feeling good about this one. Feeling real good. Ooh, Maybe the cards in the game, right? Here. Okay, and our That's first a lot of cards in that pack. rare oh, shit. is a Birchkin. Not exactly a viable competitive card, but hey, it's a pretty one. All right. Next Not from pack. the game. Feeling even better about this one. Never heard of a say, Birchkin. These cards are feeling extra silky today. I mean, they're so smooth. Not sure what they're doing down there at the uh, the card factory, but um, these are feeling good in my hands. Okay, let's see what we got here. Some jank cards, maybe a like few. Fifty cards in a pack. Cube. We'll see. And our rare for this pack is Bam Dog. Not exactly <laughs> riveting so far, but we have many packs to go. Next pack, here we come! Just cut out this part. I'm worried, you guys, if I back out of this, I, it'll, like, make it so I can't watch any of these again. Right? So I think maybe I should just watch them all, even though we're th three hours in. This hey is crazy. Hey there, card gamers! I'm the Lucky Carter, and this is a vintage pack opening video. Today I'm opening a few super rare old packs I snagged at a garage sale. I've got four packs of inscription. inscription. You would not believe the deal I got on these. Now, not all of you will even remember this game. I'm barely old enough to have uh, seen these going around in my childhood. Uh, for whatever reason, they only did one set of these cards and then stopped printing them. Uh, there's not a huge market for them anymore, but at the rate I got them for, there's not really much to lose. That being said, a foil mantis god goes for a couple hundred bucks, so fingers crossed. Really cool art on these. Definitely stands the test of time. And our rare for this pack is Blue Mage. Cool looking card, but not going to be worth very much. All right, let's see what we got going on in the second pack. Huh, uh, this pack has been opened and resealed. Blood. Hope no one snuck the rare out of it. That would suck. Come on, people, honestly. Who opens and reseals a pack? Give me a static card. Yeah. There's a set of coordinates on this card. Looks like they were drawn on with a pen. 49 degrees north, 123 degrees west. 
uh, I think I'd have to check, but I think that's pretty nearby. You know that's nearby. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's right over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't shit in the story building huts. Alright, you guys. You could be an adventurer. Here, living my best life. Got my trusty headlamp. Would you know to bring a shovel, shovel to this? Always come prepared, kids. Always come prepared. <laughs> There we go. How long is this? This looks like... Oh, there's the line. Yeah. Halfway done. Okay. What was that? Is that skeleton something? Woo. Getting close. Probably gonna be a skeleton. I think. This is where he buried all the people that Assuming he killed. Assuming there is a thing to get close to. This very well may be a massive waste of... Error. Didn't finish. It, it's, there's a little bit left on that. You see that? I can't drag it. Play it again. I see nothing discernible. Closed captioning says nothing. Wait a second. Yeah, one second. Okay, I thought maybe the time was weird on it. Next. All right. That's why you always bring an extra battery, boys and girls. Every time. You got to come prepared. <sighs> okay. Alright. The cave? This is it. And now, we dig. Kunk. I give a 75% chance it's a rock. But, only one way to find out. It's like geocaching, kind of. What the fuck? You'd be an avid geocacher. Oh my god, you guys, I can't believe it. There's actually something here. Roll. Floppy. Oh, this is where he finds the game that we're playing? What? My mixtape, dog. What the fuck? Guys, are you seeing this? I'm, uh, I'm a little confused. That's what I was thinking. If I found that, I wouldn't even know how to use it. How? Why is he recording this? All right. Fine. Wow! Great video. Grace. Okay. Time to figure out what's on this thing. Already knows more than me. Uh, is that it? Is that everything? Stop browsing the footage. No! Wait. 
Just double checking, make, make sure we're not missing anything here. 9.15, it was a while until he got those inscription cards. The next day he went out, error, still the same day. That'd be weird if it wasn't. Then he got home, bought the floppy. Seven days later, it got delivered and he started it up and he found the game. Just gonna, you know, point and click adventure style. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Right click, does that do anything? A, W, A, S, D, let's check those buttons. Okay, yes. We're back. I still need to do the camera with the film roll. That's a pile of human excrement or guts. Can I back up? I do not celebrate often. I seldom give gifts, but you, challenger, you are worthy. Please do not be polite. Dig in. Where's your camera? Is there something wrong? Your prize awaits. Very well. Come with me. Is he going to drag me in the room and kill me anyways? Stand right there. Grab the camera. I check my pockets first to make sure I have the film roll. Where is it? What if I forget? What if it doesn't prompt me to put it in? Who gave you that? You absolute ingrate. Give it back. Is that the camp? That's the pile of bodies! <laughs> um, This is the other room that we were trying to get in the entire time. There was there was no door out. Is that him? It's a card. It's his card. Can't take it. Why would it be there if I can't have it? I turned him into a card. I turned him into the card. That's what the camera does. It's a magical camera. That turns the foes into cards. I don't see any other thing to do here. I guess we're gonna go click the new game button and start all the way over. Bunch of bodies there. I can't do anything with that. Oh my god, you scared me. You scared the shit out of me. Stop. 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 Stop it. Am I going to be on the other side of the table now? Am I now the guy? I can't see where I'm going. Can you guys see anything? Probably not with the, how dark it is. It's like the same room, I think. We have to back out. It's the same door, right? The door handle should be like right there. I, I, I bet you we just have to back out and click the new, new uh, the start new game button. What about his card? His card's like over here in the wall somewhere. Last said a minute ago. Okay, so like if it if that's not what I'm supposed to do and it brings me back here, that's fine too, I guess. Options first, see what happens. No, nope, that's not it. Alter deck. Twenty nine watts. New game is now an option. I'm calling it right here, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I feel like Wow! I mean, holy crap, was that super lucky to get the stinky kill instantly uh, card on that last wave. Mothman good as well. Mothman good. I knew it was something special. It wasn't the normal, you know, one turn grow stronger thing. Ah, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry it was uh, longer than three hours, but we did it. And we're going to probably go into the second half of the game. Maybe. I don't know if it's any longer than this, to be honest, but... Feels good. Feels really, really good. I'm so happy we didn't get there just to die again. Um, that, it might not have seemed like it was that bad, but I really think that I had to think about every single move. So that was pretty difficult, but possible. So 
let your uh leave your comments down below hit the like button if you really enjoyed it let me know your thoughts i'm very curious to know what you guys think once again thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one see you guys